Central Marcom and Amy's Quilt Room here on WMBS, the Triple I High School Sports Network, and Facebook Live, which is also being brought to you today by the C. Harper Auto Group, Fayette County Recorder of Deeds, John Marietta, Uniontown Detailing, the Center's Rehab Services and Physical Therapist, Jim Burns, State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman, General Dentist Dr. Edward Wieset, First Federal Savings Alone Association of Greene County, MNR Transit, the Radcliffe Law Firm, the Browns Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, Potter's Bar and Grill, the WVE Medicine Uniontown Hospital, Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair, Shop and Save, Walnut Hill Uniontown, the Somerset Trust Company, the Catholic War Veterans, both 1669 in Hopwood, Novacare Rehabilitation, Jimmy Johns in Uniontown, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Peachin's Pharmacy, KC Sports Cafe, MNR Transit, Ford of Uniontown, and by Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop. Now stay tuned for high school baseball action here on WMBS, the Triple I High School Sports Network and Facebook Live. From Bailey Park in Uniontown, it's time for high school baseball action here on WMBS, the South Union Township Sports Network, the Triple Live High School Sports Network, and Facebook Live this afternoon. The Uniontown Red Raiders, 9 5 overall, 6 4 in conference play, host the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. The Mustangs, 10 5 overall, 7 3 in the section. Our pregame show being brought to you by the Sprouts Insurance Group and insurance agent David Hughes. They'll get you ready for the game. They're located at 217 West Main Street in Uniontown, phone 724 437. 9812 for the Sprouse Insurance Group. Our broadcast here on WMBS presented by Penn Residential, Central Marcom, and Amy's Quilt Room. This game also being broadcast on the South Union Township Sports Network in cooperation with South Union Township Supervisors Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Breezeline Cable, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith and Brian Morozak. Gary Frankhauser alongside Jerry Dupay behind the camera, Nick Barcheck back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. And Gary, both Laurel Highlands and Uniontown have locked up WPIL playoff berths. They're now playing for playoff seating. You're absolutely right, Brian, and that is great to see here for all the local fans and both high schools, Laurel Highlands and Uniontown, in the playoffs early. Now, as you said, fighting for uh, playoff positions, but this is going to be an interesting game here this afternoon. Beautiful day. Finally, some great baseball weather here in southwestern Pennsylvania after all the rain that we've had, and both teams are ready to play in some heat. West Mifflin leading the conference. In fact, they've won the conference 9-1 and one in conference play. They're hosting Ringgold this week. Laurel Highlands currently in second place in 7-3. and three. The Red Raiders in third place at 6-4 and four in that final playoff spot. Up for grabs between Elizabeth Forward, Bell Vernon, and Ringgold. Only Greensburg-Salem's been eliminated from playoff contention in the conference. The Mustangs swept the Red Raiders last year, winning by scores of 10 to nothing at LH. That was Joe Chambers' perfect game in 6-1 here at Bailey this afternoon. Tate Musco on the mound for Uniontown. Maybe a a little bit of a surprise they're expected to see Christian Thomas Joe Chambers starting for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs and we'll talk to Brad Yeoman and Kenny Musco right after this when the Sprouse Insurance Group pregame show continues. Penn Residential is a human services agency providing around the clock services and supports for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Their residential homes are located in local communities to offer residents quality care while also encouraging autonomy. They're a fast growing company offering rewarding employment opportunities to direct support professionals interested in making positive impacts in the lives of others. The SP positions start at $16 an hour and will receive a full benefit package after 90 days. For more information about current career opportunities, visit Penn Residential inc.com slash career. Marketing communications is an essential part of every business, but identifying an effective marketing strategy can be tricky. If you're interested in growing your business but unsure of where to start, contact Essential Marcom to begin the discussion. From business and product naming to logo design, website development, and social media, Central Marcom collaborates with local startups and existing businesses to maximize customer reach. Learn more about the Essential Marcom capabilities and view their portfolio at essentialmarcom.com. That's E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-M-A-R com or by contacting Dana at Dana at EssentialMarcom.com. Going on now to the Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $223 a month. Earth payment and security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarperChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease it for GMF for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months of 2,999 cash rate equity and GM loyalty or GM lease conquest. Payment is for tax, title, and fees. Earth payment and security deposit waived. Sale ends May 31st, 2022. Well supplies last. Call dealer for all other details at 7499 General dentist Dr. Edward L. Wietek Jr. treats children, teens, and adults of all ages. 
Dr. Wetech performs all phases of general dentistry, including crowns and bridges, partials, full dentures, comprehensive orthodontics, root canals, bonded white fillings, dental implants to replace missing teeth and to stabilize loose-fitting dentures, and comprehensive exams and cleaning. Dr. Wetech's office is located on the National Pike, one mile west of the mall on Route 40. Call them up at 724-439-1616 for Dr. Edward L. Wetech, Jr. When your car is damaged, the name to remember is Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair. Currently in their 59th year of providing quality, reliable service to the community, Ted Silva and Son offers complete collision service, minor to major repairs, frame and unibody repair, and glass installation. They will gladly blueprint your vehicle for repair, and they will work with your insurance company. With a paint booth that utilizes the environmentally friendly waterborne paint process, Ted Silva and Son not only cares for our community and our children, they care for our environment. Located on Atlas Road in Hopwood, it is the goal of Ted Silva and Son to alleviate the stress of an accident and assist you in any way possible. Family owned and operated for 59 years, call 724-437-2351 for Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair, LLC. Proud to sponsor local high school sports. Brian Morosak back here on the Sprouse Insurance Group pregame show. High school baseball, Laurel Highlands at Uniontown this afternoon being joined by Mustang head coach Brad Yeoman. Brad, two big wins for your Mustangs last week, locking up a WPIL playoff spot. What a performance on Tuesday from Devin Kravosky pitching a five-inning no-hitter for your Laurel Highlands program. Yeah, two big wins there. Um, you know, first and foremost, being able to kind of lock up that playoff berth and, uh, you know, ensure that you know, we'll be playing in the postseason tournament was a big deal. Um, you know, we, we kind of looked at that as we were kind of going into those two games. Um, you know, standings were still kind of tight as we were going into those two games. And, and again, you want to certainly finish as best you can. But uh, two huge wins there against, uh, you know, a, a solid EF team. And, uh, yeah, I mean, really, really proud of the work that Devin Kravosky, um, you know, did in, in that game at home, throwing the no-hitter, uh, you know, five inning shutout was just uh, just big, especially especially to see us respond after uh, the way that the first game in that series went where we had to go to extras and pull it out. So, um, you know, just just real great job all around by the team to uh, get two really big wins there. And a lot on the line this week as far as playoff seeding with this two-game series with Union Town. Sure. You know, there'll be a lot of excitement and energy around these games, I'm sure. Um, you know, just the nature of Anytime Uniontown and Little Highlands meet, um, you know, in any kind of sports uh, setting, whether it's baseball or hoops or football, um, always is an attraction in and of itself. Um, obviously, there's a little bit more meaning still as both of us are posturing for, uh, you know, seating alignment and, uh, you know, where the section standings might land. So, uh, you know, we're, we're all kind of staring up at West Mifflin still, but... Uh, Nonetheless, both of these games mean a lot to both of us, so I expect um, I expect to see everybody's A games uh, today and tomorrow, that's for sure. And certainly a lot of familiarity between these two programs as well. Kenny's coached some of your players in the summer, and of course you've had some of these Uniontown players on your Legion team as well over the last couple of years. Yeah, I'd, I'd say uh, these are probably some of the easier scouting reports uh, scenarios uh, you know, from, from a coaching staff perspective. You know, yeah, everybody's very familiar with, uh, you know, the players and coaches involved uh, on both sides. Um, you know, I think we all kind of know each other from, uh, you know, playing in season, playing, uh, you know, summertime baseball, and, uh, you know, just being around these kids uh, as much as, you know, all these coaches have uh, on both sides of, of, of this. And, you know, that's, that's what it, it, it's, uh, it creates a nice, you know, uh, rivalry situation and just creates, you um, you know, just other layers to this in terms of, uh, you know, it's kind of like they say in Steelers-Ravens, right? They, there's no secret on what they're going to do. Everybody kind of knows each other. It's just a matter of going out and executing. And, and uh, you know, hopefully hopefully good fortune falls our way. Proud to appreciate your time as always. Best of luck this week. We'll see you out there. Thanks, sir. Appreciate always. Uh, thanks for the coverage all season. And uh, appreciate everything you guys do. Looking for the highest quality products at the lowest prices? Shop and save on Walnut Hill in Uniontown is the widest selection of brands and the freshest offerings around. They specialize in your family's grocery needs. Save big and sign up for the Shop and Save Perks card to get money-saving benefits and discounts on gas. Shop and save. Walnut Hill Road, Uniontown, open 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Working hard to offer you the best at Shop and Save because it's the just right thing to do. 
Moving forward to home construction season with First Federal of Greene County. First Federal's construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project with all the tools you need. First Federal offers construction loans, owner-builder loans, and home improvement loans. With offices in Fayette, Greene, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit with a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreene.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, and MLS number 458729. Back now with Union.net, Coach Kenny Musco, the Red Raiders hosting Laurel Highlands High School Baseball here on WMBS and the Triple I High School Sports Network. And Kenny, quite an accomplishment. Your Red Raiders clinching a WPIL playoff spot for the first time since 2014. Yeah, a lot of close games in the past. And, uh, you know, came down to a make or break season, it seems like, in the past since then. And, uh, no, that was our goal for the season. We reached that, and now uh, we're just trying to prepare for playoffs and hopefully have two games that, uh, that help us prepare a little bit. Hopefully we can pull one or two out. Yeah, it certainly would help for playoff seeding as well if you're able to get a couple of wins over Laurel Highlands this week. That's what I was thinking. You know, you don't, you don't, you know, you kind of look at it and you're just saying, you know, you don't want to be content with just making the playoffs. I think if we, if we do get the wins, it does put us in a good spot. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be a good game, I think. We're, we're excited for them. And a lot of familiarity, obviously, between the two programs. Brad's coached some of your kids playing Legion ball. You mentioned to me last week you've coached a couple of the Laurel Islands kids over the years as well, which really makes for, uh, I think, an exciting series. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what, it's just uh, when it comes down to it, man, it's all about the players and the kids, and they're all good kids. And, uh, you know, like I said, I just hope it's a good game and there's good, uh, a good vibe for everybody. It's an enjoyable thing to watch, I think. Kenny, appreciate your time as always. Best of luck this week against Laurel Highlands, and hopefully you can draw a pretty good playoff seat here later in the week as well. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, and I appreciate you guys again. Thanks, Kenny. Appreciate it. The Catholic War Veterans is a veterans organization located in Fayette County since 1950. They are proud to advertise on WMBS sports programs and to contribute to the veterans' hospital, local sports teams, and scouting organizations. They'll be having their Veterans Appreciation Breakfast on May 22nd. Police, firefighters, and first responders are also welcome. Additionally, their 12th annual Frank L. Musica golf outing is this year. They have proudly given 37 scholarships to area students since its inception. Catholic War Veterans post 1669 in Hopper. I'm attorney Rob Harper, and I'm happy to be joining Bill Martin and Trip Radcliffe at Radcliffe Law in Uniontown. I grew up in Uniontown and chose to make Fayette County my home. I also represent the county as an assistant district attorney and I know my way around a courtroom. If you are hurt in an accident, buying or selling a home, need assistance with an estate or will preparation, call me at Radcliffe Law, 724-439-3939. The initial consultation is free. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. Farm fresh milk, straight off the farm. For farm fresh dairy products, produced, processed, packaged, and sold right there, stop in Jackson Farms Dairy Store, Route 40 at Briar Hill. Check out Jackson Farms Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, and Cheddar Cheese Curds, now available, and Cheddar Cheese coming soon. Plus delicious hot deli items to eat in or take out, and the most delectable homemade ice cream you'll ever eat. Best of luck to our area teams from Jackson Farms. Bad hair day? Bad day at the office? Bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprowls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meal you just don't want to have to make it well with jimmy john's you don't have to whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich click to order at jimmyjohns.com freaky fast freaky good order online at jimmyjohns.com or call 724-437-6800 for delivery or curbside pickup jimmy john's next to walnut hill shop and save on the go? No time to stop? That's when you'll love Peach and Pharmacy's curbside pickup at Peach and Market in downtown Connellsville. Next time you have a prescription to get, let Peach and Pharmacy make it easy for you. Call ahead at 724-626-9600 or send a message. Let friendly curbside pickup keep you right where you want to be, in the driver's seat. Peach and Pharmacy, your local pharmacy. Laurel Highlands coming to bat here in the top half of the first inning. Here's Gary with our lineup. 
Thanks, Brian. Leading off for the Mustangs, number nine, Ty Sankovic. He plays shortstop. Batting second, number two, C.J. Gesk. He will be in right field. Batting third and playing center field, number 17, Carson D'Amico. In the cleanup spot, number 10, Alex McLean. He plays third base. Number 22, Braden O'Brien will follow him. He's on first base. Joe Chambers on the mound tonight, batting after O'Brien. In that seventh spot, number three, Frank Kula. He plays second base. Batting in the eighth spot, number 10, Pat Cavanaugh behind home plate. And rounding out the Mustang lineup, number five, Braden McKnight. He will be in left field this afternoon. Defensively for Uniontown, we'll have Tanner Uphold out in left, Tyler Hawk in center, and Eric Odom in right around the horn. Christian Thomas playing third, Hunter Chuckcheck playing short, Austin Grego playing second, Clay Dean playing first, Colton Sparks catching. You might ask with both Thomas and Chuckcheck in the field who's pitching. Well, it's Tate Musco. We saw him pitch well against Mount Pleasant a week ago Friday. He's 1-0 on the season. This is his sixth appearance. He's worked 18 innings, given up 10 hits, 9 runs, 8 of the murd, struck out 20, walked 11, and has a 4.30 ERA. So Coach Musco rolling the dice a little bit. Thomas has been stellar all season long. We'll likely see him tomorrow. But his son Tate pitched well the last time we saw him against Mount Pleasant. He's going to get the start here in a big rivalry game against Laurel Islands. Well, you might see some uh, pitching by staff here also, too, Brian, and the Mustangs might be in the same ballpark, too. You don't want to really wear your guys out coming into the playoffs, but this is a big matchup between Laurel Highlands and Uniontown, the Crosstown rivals, and they both certainly want to get the bragging rights here in Uniontown. And nice to see both of these schools peaking at the right time. They both swept conference series last week. Laurel Highlands defeating Elizabeth Fuller. They got the no-hitter on Tuesday from Devin Kravoski. And Uniontown swept Ringgold last week as well. That's, that's exactly right. And momentum is a huge thing in baseball, especially in high school baseball. And with that momentum, both teams will try to continue that with this crosstown rivalry series to end the season and go into those playoffs so that's going to be very important for the mustangs and the red raiders to keep their bats hot and also allow their pitchers some extra work Get our broadcast presented by Penn Residential, Essential Marcom, and Amy's Quilt Room on the South Union Township Sports Network. Brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Fernan, and Jason Scott, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialists, SWGI, and Uniontown, and Zebley Mahalov and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. And Gary, for Uniontown, they clinched a playoff spot for the first time since 2014. Talked to Jim Burns earlier. He said their last playoff win. Actually, all the way back in 1983, yes, it's been that long, they knocked off Penn Trafford, played the game at Mount Pleasant. Mark Edenfield got the win on the mound for Uniontown. Well, it has been a while, but uh, it's great to see. And Coach Musco deserves a lot of credit for the improvement over the Red Raiders over the last several years. And he's uh, has them peaking here today, and I don't think we're going to see them fall by the wayside anytime soon. they got a lot of young guys that are really good, too. They've had some nice teams over the years. Their 84 team lost to Moon in a playoff game at Charleroi. You mentioned the most recent playoff appearance in 2014. They lost to Blackhawk at Fox Chapel. Prior to that, they hadn't made the playoffs since 2002. Lost in the preliminary round to Baldwin 10-1 to that year. Prior to that, they made the playoffs in 2000. Lost to Bethel Park and actually lost to Brownsville in a playoff game in 1998. So they haven't had too many opportunities over the last couple of years. And, you know, these two games against Laurel Highlands, big for Uniontown as well to maybe try to get a little bit of a higher playoff seed and get a more winnable first-round playoff game. You always like to see that, and uh, both teams have the same moment, uh, motivation. So it's going to be very interesting, and I think a great game here at Bailey Park. First pitch on the way next year on WMBS, the South Union Township Sports Network, the Triple Live High School Sports Network at Facebook Live. Understanding the complicated tax laws when it comes to estates can be extremely stressful. Dealing with a loved one's estate after they pass can be one of the most challenging tasks for a family in a time of need. Hi, this is attorney Dan White of Zebley Mahalov & White. I'm here to help make that process easier. Our firm can help you and your family 
create and review wills and estates to make sure when the time comes to settle your assets, it will not be stressful because you have a plan. Don't put yourself through unneeded stress settling an estate or worrying about things you don't need to worry about. Call our office and we can help. Zebley Mahalov and White. Call us at 724-439-9200 or visit us online at zeblaw.com. Zebley Mahalov and White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. Zebley Mahalov and White. Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $223 a month. Earth payment and security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit seeharperchevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. We stick for GM out for well qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year, 24 months of 2,999 cash rate equity, and GM with loyalty or GM with conquest. Payment is for tax, title, and fees. Earth payment and security deposit waived. Sale ends May 31st, 2022. Walk supplies last. Call dealer for all other details at 724-929-8000. Penn Residential is a fast growing human services agency agency serving individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. They are currently seeking full-time and part-time direct support professionals to provide direct care and support at our residential homes. Their DSPs partner with adults and children, and their circles of support help them achieve independence, growth, and happiness through high-quality, creative services. Candidates must possess good communication skills, have a valid state driver's license, clean driving record over the past three years, and have reliable transportation. At Penn Residential, DSP positions start at $16 an hour, and you'll receive full benefit package after 90 days. Penn Residential is a licensed and qualified provider under Pennsylvania's DPW's Office of Developmental Programs. Our homes serve residents in Fayette, Washington, and Westmoreland counties in southwestern Pennsylvania. For more information about current career opportunities, visit PennResidentialInc.com slash careers. Penn Residential Inc. is an equal opportunity employer. Just about set to go here at Bailey Park as Tate Musco finishing his last couple of warm-up tosses. Ty Sankovich, C.J. Gesk, and Carson D'Amico to get things started for the Mustangs. And those bats have been a little hotter as of late, Gary. Absolutely, especially last week when we saw them handle Elizabeth forward in five innings, 11 to nothing. And especially Ty Sankovic, he saw his average dipping a little bit there in the middle of the season, but he really had the bat moving there against Elizabeth forward and knocked one a long way out to right field for a home run. Ty now batting 278 is going to lead things off for the Mustangs today with a homer and three RBIs. Junior shortstop for Laurel Highlands facing the lefty Tate Musco again for Tate. Sixth appearance on the season, 1-0 record, 4.30 ERA. Big opportunity for the sophomore. First pitch on the way, fastball called strike from our home plate umpire today and our crew actually, Bill Schottenheimer calling the balls and strikes. Mark Grant, your base umpire this afternoon. Well, we talked about Tate get Musco getting the start and uh, He's shown some control here early, and it might be a situation where the Mustangs have a few left-handers in the starting lineup, and they wanted the left-handed pitcher to face those left-handed batters for the Mustangs. A couple of quick strikes to get things going for Tate Musco as Ty Sankovic behind 0-2 in the 0-2 pitch on the way, and Ty hits this one high in the air to left field. Tanner Uphold getting under it for Uniontown. He'll make the catch for the first out of the inning. And likely, Gary, tomorrow for Laurel Highlands, we'll see a lefty in Devin Kurvoski. Absolutely, and he had that five-inning no-hitter last Tuesday against uh, Elizabeth Forward and really showed that he has the ability to spot those pitches. Now C.J. Guest coming to bat here for Laurel Highlands, junior right fielder batting 286 with five RBIs. Nice to see both Laurel Highlands and Uniontown getting some arm options here late in the season. Of course, you have Christian Thomas, Hunter Chuck Check as well on the Uniontown side. First pitch here to C.J. a little high for ball one. And Thomas, Chuck Check, and Musco, a good three-person combination. Of course, you have Braden O'Brien on the on the Laurel Highland side as well, along with Joe Chambers, who's on the mound today. And Devin Kravoski will likely start tomorrow. 1-0 pitch, called strike to even things up at 1-1 one one now to C.J. Guest. Wind blowing a little right to left right now. Bright sunshine, game time temperature around 70 degrees. And Tate has thrown nothing but strikes yet. 1-1 one, one on the way. It's a called ball to take us to 2-1. and one. Wind blowing some of your pages around there, Gary, too. Got to duct tape yeah. everything down here today. Had to send Frank Cole on a scavenger hunt. <laughs> Pick those up. 2-1 on the way. A little high 3-1 and one now to C.J. Gask from Tate Musco. 
And the weather actually looks good most of the week. Actually, aren't expected to see any more rain until Saturday. Not a cloud in the sky no. here today. Haven't been able to say that much this year. 3-1 on the way, and that one a late called strike. CJ was on his way to first. Yes. That'll make things full now. And three and two. Now the full count pitch from Musco on the way. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Tate doing a good job. Work his way back and get the strike out of CJ Guest for the second out. Now the stop half of the first inning. That'll bring up Carson D'Amico, the center fielder for the Mustangs. He's also had a hot bat lately. Batting 396, has homered once and driven in 11 runs. Senior center fielder for the Mustangs. Carson now will step in. Tate will wind and fire the first pitch here to Carson. Called strike 0-1. Crowd still filtering in, but the bleachers are filling up quickly here, Brian. We got the sunshine sunshine over here where we're at, the shade on the Mustang dug outside. Always oh, seem to get a big crowd anytime Laurel Highlands and Uniontown get together, no matter the sport. That pitch from Tate missing there. Good velocity so far for Tate. Certainly a solid option on the mound for Uniontown, as you mentioned, being the lefty as well in the rotation, create some favorable matchups there for Uniontown. That pitch just missing to Carson. And Tate taking his time here. Retired the first two Mustangs. Ty Sankovic flew out to left and C.J. Gesk struck out swinging. Now Tate with a long look in. Next pitch on the way, comes back with a fastball fouled off. Takes us to one and two. I think they've done a good job cutting the grass down. Beautiful infield. It's all dirt infield, but that loom is really smooth and really should not be looking for any bad hops here. And Joe Walcos and the crew from the city of Uniontown always doing a nice job maintaining the field. One, two. Fouled off there on the right side, so the count remains one and two. Again, these two teams will play at Laurel Highlands tomorrow. Uniontown will wrap up the regular season Thursday at Brownsville. Laurel Highlands will have their senior day game, which we'll have for you here on both WMBS and the South Union Township Sports Network Thursday against Albert Gallatin. That'll be a 4 o'clock first pitch. Another 1-2. Must go to D'Amico and Carson. Hard hit ball to second. Grego knocking it down. Throw over to first to Clay Dean to retire D'Amico. 4-3 for the third out of the inning. So the Mustangs retired 1-2-3 here in the top of the first. We'll go to the bottom of the first. Scoreless here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Day broadcast presented by Penn Residential Central Marcom and Amy's Quote Room. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right. Good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Amy's Quilt Room is a full-service quilt room located in Uniontown, offering retail goods and an ample sewing classroom, welcoming sewers of all skill levels, from beginners to advanced. If you're enthusiastic about sewing, you may even want to consider joining the Quilty Pleasures Quilt Club at Amy's Quilt Room. You'll stitch fabric in friendship with every project. For more information, visit amysquiltroom.com or stop in to see them at 20 West Penn Street, Uniontown. Amy's Quilt Room, a fresh and modern twist to a timeless tradition. Moving down to the bottom of the first inning, in Utah coming to bat, game scoreless. Here's Gary with the Red Raider batting lineup. Leading off number 14, Christian Thomas, the third baseman, batting second, number 24, Hunter Chukchak, playing shortstop. Batting third, number 26, Tate Musco. He's on the mound for the Red Raiders. Batting fourth, number 69, Colt Sparks. He's the catcher. Batting fifth, number 33, Clay Dean at first base. Batting sixth, number 25, Eric Odom. He's in right field. The designated hitter is number 99, Wyatt Nels. Number seven, Austin Gray goes in that eighth spot. He plays second base. 
And in the nice spot, number 23, Tanner Uphold in left field. How about that Laurel Highlands defense, Gary? Looking around the outfield, Braden McKnight in left field, Carson D'Amico in center, C.J. Gesk in right field. Around the infield, Alex McClain at third, Ty Sankovich at shortstop, Frank Kula at second base, and Braden O'Brien at first on the mound. Joe Chambers to his battery mate, Pat Cavanaugh. First pitch from Chambers, fastball misses low to Christian Thomas. Count 1-0, Thomas Jr., third baseman today, batting 235 with four RBIs for the Uniontown Red Raiders. 1-0 pitch now from Joe. Hard fastball right down the pipe for a strike to even up the count at 1-1. One one. Seventh appearance of the season for Joe. Comes in with a 3-1 record. 1.53 ERA has worked 32 innings, giving up 26 hits, 8 runs, 7 of them earned. Struck out 38 and walked 12 so far this season. Miss there to take the count at 2-1 and one now to Christian Thomas. I'm sure the Red Raiders will remember the perfect game last year. Yes, that was at Laurel Highlands. Joe comes back, finds the strike zone, even things up at 2-2 two and two now to Christian Thomas. Mustang swept the Red Raiders last year, winning by scores of 10 to nothing. That was the perfect game in 6-1 here at Bailey. Now the 2-2 two -two on the way, fouled off by Christian. Count remains 2-2. Two and two. It's Thomas, Chuck, Check, and Musco here in the bottom of the first for Uniontown after Tate Musco retired Laurel Highlands 1-2-3 in the top half of the first inning. Joe getting a fresh baseball. Set now at the 2-2 to Christian Thomas. Breaking ball, just nub foul there from Christian. Count remains 2-2. Two and two. Sharply breaking ball for Joe Chambers on the 2-2 two -two count. Remains 2-2. Two and two. Had a little bit of a nice late dive there on the pitch. Sure did. Now Joe focused again. Wind and fire the 2-2. Another fastball just missed, and we're full of three and two. Red Raiders making Joe throw some early pitches here on the leadoff batter, Christian Thomas. Now the 3-2. Joe winds and fires again. Another fastball fouled off by Christian. Count remains three and two. Christian hanging tough in there, getting a piece of those good pitches by Joe Chambers. The Red Raiders' bats have gotten going a little bit as well. Their team batting average was hovering in the 160-170 range. Now back around 230 as Thomas chops that one right back to Joe Chambers, who throws over to first to Braden O'Brien to retire Thomas 1-3 for the first down of this bottom half of the first inning. Nine pitch at bat there for Christian Thomas. So good at bat. Now Hunter Chuck Chuck coming to the plate. He's batting 245 with 10 RBIs. Senior shortstop. It's one of three Red Raiders seniors. So a good squad coming back next year as well. First pitch to Chuck Chuck. First pitch swing. Ground ball right to Braden O'Brien. Steps on the first base bag to make the Put out three unassisted for the second out of this bottom half of the first inning. Then I'll bring up Tate Mosco. Sophomore getting the start on the mound today. Batting 237 has driven in seven runs so far this year. Batting from the left side. It's the righty Joe Chambers. Mustangs in the away blues. Red numbers, gray pants here today. Uniontown, the home whites. Maroon numbers. Little black trim. First pitch outside from Chambers to Mosco. Of course, so much familiarity exists between these two programs. Of course, you have Brad Yeoman, who's the Uniontown Legion coach, has coached a lot of these Uniontown kids in the summer. And Kenny Musco has coached a number of travel teams as well over the years. He's had a lot of the Mustangs on his roster. Another ground ball to first, and O'Brien makes the second straight put out three unassisted to retire Musco. So one, two, three, go the Red Raiders in the bottom half of the first inning after an inning. We're scoreless from Bailey Park here on the CR Brada Group High School Sports Day broadcast presented by Penn Residential, Essential Marcom, and Amy's Quote Room. Spring forward to home construction season with First Federal of Greene County. First Federal's construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project with all the tools you need. First Federal offers construction loans, owner-builder loans, and home improvement loans. With offices in Fayette, Greene, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit with a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreene.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 4587. Bad hair day, bad day at the office. 
bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprouls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock is not guaranteed continued insurance coverage and it's not available in all states. Uniontown Detailing offers an all-inclusive auto care experience. Services include full auto detailing, professional ceramic coating, window tinting, undercoating, paintless dent repair, and more. Uniontown Detailing has moved to a new location on 255 South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown. Stop by and check them out today. Best of luck this season to all local teams from Uniontown Detailing. We're ready for the top half of the second inning. Due up for the Mustangs, Alex McLean, Braden O'Brien, and Joe Chambers to face Tate Musco. 15 pitches for Tate in the first inning. One, two, three inning for Tate. McLean with a big rip, and he has a power, Brian. Fouls off that first pitch, coming in with a 360 average, 13 RBIs for the senior, playing third base today for Brad Yeoman's squad. And now Tate's going to get a fresh baseball from no. Mr. Schottenheimer, our home plate umpire. Said he's a distant cousin of, Mar of uh, Marty. Yeah. I'm not sure why he went out to the mound, though. But Just toss know. it back. Maybe he doesn't have a good arm. Warning on a spitball, maybe. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Tate taking his time up. here, yeah. Yeah, sure is. Deliberate. Low and inside. One and one, the count now to Alex McLean. Have to thank Frank Kula as well, helping us out with our score hub again this afternoon from Bailey Park. Done that all year, done a fine job. One one offering. In the dirt again, two and one. Going to the breaking ball to Alex McLean, trying to keep him off stride. Or position just to the left of the Uniontown dugout. I actually told Frank in between innings, hopefully we're going to get him in too much trouble sitting over here on the Uniontown side or our broadcast location is here at Bailey Park today. There's a long drive to deep right center field, way back off the fence, and that's going to be a double leading off the sec first second inning. I'm sorry for... Alex McLean, he gave that a ride to the deepest part of the field, Brian. Yeah, right to right center field. Eric Odom making the relay in for Uniontown. That was a tough play for Odom. Had to get repositioned out there and right as McLean took him all the way back to the wall. And the Mustangs now with the leadoff runner in scoring position with nobody out here in the top of the second inning. Braden O'Brien, the first baseman, coming to the plate. And he's going to get a little advice from Coach Yeoman as Colt Sparks also goes out to the mound to talk to Tate. Both of these teams lost, though, non-conference games end of the week. Last week, Laurel Highlands actually held a nice ceremony. We didn't find out about it to the last moment. We would have liked to have maybe been there for that one, but Laurel Highlands falling this past Thursday against Hempfield. They played that game down at Hutchinson, and they retired Longtime head coach Scott Deberry's number before the start of that game. Uniontown also lost a non-conference game at Beth Center last Thursday as well. Probably saw a lot of alternate pitchers in those yes, contests. Correct. I don't know how much you can look at those results and put any kind of bearing in it as far as playoff seating or anything. Time called and O'Brien steps out. Musco steps back. McLean out at second base. Here's the pitch. There's a strike at the knees. I think it's pretty safe to say that Coach DeBerry, during his tenure at Laurel Highlands, really took the program to the next level. They kind of always had issues trying to get over the hurdle in the first round of the playoffs and certainly had some great runs for the Mustangs, including that appearance in a WPIL title game back in 2019 and played in a state playoff play-in game last year as well. Ground ball to third. Hold the runner and throw over to first in time for the out at first. So nice play by third baseman Christian Thomas. He looks back McLean at second and makes the strong throw over to Clay Dean for the first out of the inning. Of course, Thomas, a very strong arm over at third. Usually the number one ace in the Red Raiders pitching rotation. I would have to think we'll likely see him get the start tomorrow over at Laurel Highlands. 
So Joe Chambers will step to the plate now with McLean still out there scoring position. Chambers, this is average now up to 333 with four RBIs. Oh, a little uh, below the knees, but getting the call there was Musco. Count 0 and 1 now to Joe Chambers. Working from the stretch, Tate Musco. Outfield pulled around to the left side for Chambers. Here's a pitch. Strike two called, 0 and 2. Fastball about letter high that time, so going low and high is Tate Musco for the 0-2 count. These two schools will find out their playoff fates Friday. Playoff pairings will come out 2 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Chambers got to go into the protection mode here. Get that ball in play somewhere. There's a foul off to the right side. So Joe doing just that, trying to push that ball to the right side. Baseball playoffs last year started the Wednesday after they were released, after the pairings were released. Not sure if that's going to hold true again this year. You never know with the WPIL playoff committee. Still 0-2 to Joe Chambers. McLean leadoff double here for the Mustangs in the top of the second, trying to push one across. Still no score. Here's a pitch. That's high and outside. So trying to get Joe to chase a little bit that time. Tate goes out of the strike zone. I mentioned the only team in Section 3 and 4A eliminated from postseason contention is Greensburg-Salem, and they've actually played all of their remaining conference games. They're at 4-8, and eight, currently sit in fifth place, but just because of the way the results are going to end up falling, they have no way of making it into the playoffs. Bell Vernon and Elizabeth Ford, if the Leps get a sweep over the Warriors, they'd get in. Elizabeth Ford would clinch a playoff spot with one win over Bell Vernon in that series. Warriors, Warriors host the Leopards today in Ringgold at West Mifflin. Ringgold needs a couple of wins and some help over West Mifflin to get in. That's going to be a tall task as well for the Rams. 1-2 pitch was high and outside, so 2-2 two and two now to Joe Chambers. Sparks giving the signals to Musco. Here's the pitch. Another foul off to the right side. That's way up onto Charles Street. Those foul balls, Gary, much harder to retrieve this portion of the season than they were maybe a couple of weeks ago now with all the trees and brush now grown up. Those balls aren't as easy to spot on that hill on the right side. Freshman duty. Yes. I'm be busy all afternoon down here at Bailey. Time called by Joe as he steps out. Shade coming in across home plate now. Not sure that will be in effect for the batter's eye, which is really a good batter's eye here at Bailey Park. Here's a pitch inside for ball three. So after 0-2, the count runs full. Now, wind's been shifting as well. Started out right to left, and now actually blowing in a little bit. Shifted for a moment right to left after going left to right. And this has been going all over the place this day. Tornado warnings. Yes. Not as bad as some of the winds we've seen down at Hutchinson, though, over the years. Uh, coming in off the lake. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 3 2 pitch from Tate Musco to Joe Chambers. And fouled it back again. Joe not taking any chances. That ball could have been low, but good idea by Joe to take a whack at it. Net kept that one in play. Making him throw more pitches. Appreciate all the folks watching on our live stream as well. Bobby Ruggieri checking in. Big Mustang supporter. So very deliberate now. Tate Musco taking his time. 3-2 pitch once again. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So big strike out there by Tate Musco to get the second out of the inning without allowing the leadoff double of Alex McLean to advance. Second strikeout of the game for Musco. Now has 22 strikeouts to go against 11 walks so far this season with Frank Kula coming to the plates. Frank, a good contact hitter, so let's see if he can find a hole somewhere to move McLean around. 
Game still scoreless as we work here on the top of the second. First pitch on the outside corner, four strike one. The Pat Cavanaugh behind Kula in the Mustang batting lineup. Kula coming in with a 250 average, has homered once and driven in seven runs so far this season. Junior second baseman. Batting from the left side. He's shown some power this year also. Lefty versus lefty matchup. There's a pop-up. That's over here towards us. And right behind Jerry onto the Little League field. Worry Jerry a little bit there. So at 0-2 count now to Frank Kula. Musco has looked confident, Gary, for a start in a big-time game. Sure has, and he's thrown some nice pitches. Been pretty good control here so far also. 0-2 pitch. There's a looper into right field, and that's going to be tracked down in right center wow. by the center fielder, Tyler Hawk. So Frank gave it a ride, but it was right at the center fielder, Tyler Hawk. So that'll end the inning. With the Mustangs failing to score, we're still scoreless going to the bottom of the second here on the Sea Harper Sports Day, sponsored by Penn Residential, Central Marcon, and Amy's Quilt Room. Fayette County Recorder of Deeds, John Marietta, would like to wish the Laurel Highlands Mustangs, the Uniontown Red Raiders, and all of our local high school baseball teams the best of luck this season and invite you to listen to his show every Tuesday at 315 here on WMBS. Penn Residential is a human services agency providing around-the-clock services and supports for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Their residential homes are located in local communities to offer residents quality care while also encouraging autonomy. They're a fast-growing company offering rewarding employment opportunities to direct support professionals interested in making positive impacts in the lives of others. ESP positions start at $16 an hour and will receive a full benefit package after 90 days. For more information about current career opportunities, visit PennResidentialINC.com slash careers. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases, but most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation. And there are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. Back here at Bailey Park, here's Gary as we head to the bottom of the second. Thanks, Brian, on WMBS Radio, WMBS Facebook Live, Laurel Highland School District Facebook Live, South Union Township Sports Facebook Live, Trib Live. We're live worldwide. Yeah, a lot of outlets here today. Game scoreless, bottom of the second. Red Raiders with Sparks, Dean, and Odom coming to the plate. Colt Sparks now looks at a curveball in there for a strike. Sparks coming in with a 326 average. Has homered once and driven in 14 runs so far this season. Senior catcher for the Red Raiders. Here's the 0-1 from Joe in the dirt. Good pitch, trying to make Colt take a cut at a bad pitch. So one and one. Red Raiders retired one, two, three in the bottom half of the first inning. Christian Thomas grounded out right back to Joe Chambers on a couple of three unassisted plays from Braden O'Brien over at first. Retiring Hunter Chuck Jack and Tate Musco. Kind of gives you an idea that Joe's velocity is pretty good with those ground balls to first base, and that one's high for two balls and one strike. Joe picked up a no decision last Monday against Elizabeth Forward. Mustangs got an extra inning win a week ago Monday. There's a strike at the knees, two and two. Mustangs were actually leading three to one when Joe hit the pitch limit of 100 pitches in the sixth inning. Had to come out. Here's the pitch, curveball high. Runs the count full, three and two. Those new pitching rules went into effect a couple of years ago, certainly changed the whole dynamic of the game. What we used to see, Gary, with the pitchers pulled after 100 pitches automatically. Another ground ball to first base and busy over there at first base for the Mustangs, Braden O'Brien, three straight unassisted plays. Yes. You've had one three, three unassisted, three unassisted, three unassisted so far. <laughs> That's going to bring up number 33, Clay Dean. He's the first baseman for Uniontown. Batting 225, one homer, nine RBIs this season for Dean. 
Looks at ball one. Working from the windup, Joe Chambers rocks and deals. That's low and outside for 2-0. and oh. You have to like what you've seen from the Mustang pitchers, especially as of late. You look at that performance from Kravosky on Tuesday against Elizabeth Ford as well, and you couple what we've seen from the lefty and what Joe's thrown as well this year really gives the Mustangs, I think, a good opportunity to make another run this year. And Laurel Highlands has shown over the years that the seedings really don't matter too much in the baseball playoffs. 3-0, and that ball was high and inside. So 3-0 pitch. Strike at the letters that time. You'll, You'll likely see a 12-team field in 4A unless you get some ties for fourth place. And sometimes if you have that bye, you can get that rust to accumulate a little bit and doesn't always work out well. Swing and a miss for strike two. So after 3-0 and count, count now full. Second batter of the inning for the Red Raiders, Clay Dean. You'll likely see preliminary round and first round games played next week and then the quarters and semis played back to back like we've seen in previous years. So Clay looks at a high one inside for a walk. So the first base runner for the Red Raiders is by way of a free pass. No perfect game this year for Joe against Union Town. That's going to bring up Eric Odom, the right fielder, senior captain for the Red Raiders. Batting 205 with four RBIs in right field today. First time that Joe will have to go from the stretch. Coming up even with the bag at third base is McLean. There's a fastball in the outside corner for a strike. Joe's uncle Mook is here today along, along with his uh, grandfather, of course, Laurel Island's athletic director, Mark Jump. I don't think either of them miss any games. No. Especially when Joe's on the mound. Yes. There's a bunt right up the first base side. Joe's only play is to first. And covering over there is the first baseman, Braden O'Brien. So a sacrifice completed there by Eric Odom. Little small ball for the Red Raiders. Moves Clay Dean up to scoring position with two outs. Good opportunity here for Wyatt Nails, the designated hitter, coming in with a 217 average and four RBIs. Maybe to drive in Dean here for Union Town. So your designated hitter is in the game because he's he can hit. So he had a pinch runner here for Dean. We've seen Coach Musco use these pinch runners a lot this season. It'll be Aiden Martin to run. But the re-entry rule in high school baseball is really kind of crazy not to do that yeah, to correct. get the speed out there that you can use. As long as those base runners you have going out, Gary, are alert to what's going on. Well, I know that's one of your uh, pet, pet peeves. peeves yeah. <laughs> but as long as the guys are in the game, I have no problem with it. And Union Towns, guys they've used really have not had issues this year. They've been effective when they've come in. And Coach Moscow, again, has used the pinch runners a lot this year. And also keeps the guys in the bench, I think, involved because they know more likely than not they're going to get an opportunity in the game. If it's not the plate or in the field, maybe to pinch run. First pitch to Nels is just slightly outside for ball one. Here's the 1-0. There's a high drive to deep right field going back and making the catch on the run out there in right field. C.J. Gesk for the third out of the inning. So Nels gives it a ride, but all for naught, and we'll go to the top half of the third. Still no score in the Steve Harper Sports Day, sponsored by Penn Residential, Central Marcom, and Amy's Quilt Room. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right. Good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, 
State Farm is there. I'm attorney Rob Harper, and I'm happy to be joining Bill Martin and Trip Radcliffe at Radcliffe Law in Uniontown. I grew up in Uniontown and chose to make Fayette County my home. I also represent the county as an assistant district attorney, and I know my way around a courtroom. If you are hurt in an accident, buying or selling a home, need assistance with an estate or will preparation, call me at Radcliffe Law, 724-439-3939. The initial consultation is free. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. Patrick Cavanaugh, Braden McKnight, and Ty Stankovich do up for Laurel Highlands here in the top half of the third inning. Scoreless so far, Uniontown and Laurel Highlands. Brian Morozak along with Gary Frankhauser, Jerry Dupay behind the camera. Frank Kula helping us out with the score hub, and Nick Barcheck back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. The lefty Tate Musco on the hill for Uniontown. Pat Cavanaugh at the plate. First pitch from Tate to Pat. Might have been foul tipped. Nonetheless, the count 0-1-1. Cavanaugh coming in, 227 average. Seven RBIs for the Mustang Junior catcher. I think you're right. Uh, Schottenheimer can't throw it out there. Yeah, that's <laughs> why I think he's walking out. the ball out. Well, hand it to the catcher. Yep. That would be a little <laughs> easier. Maybe he's trying to get his 10,000 steps today. I guess. Trying to walk out there. You never know. You can have a bad shoulder. But yeah. still, you're right. Why not just give it to the catcher to make the throw? <laughs> Guess whatever works for him. Yep. Count 0-1-1. Must go to Kavanaugh. Pitch on the way. And that one called strike two. 0-2 no now. From Tate to Pats. Again, we're on the air just before 4 o'clock tomorrow for the Mustangs and the Red Raiders Part 2 from Laurel Highland High School. At least as far as we've been told so far, the game will be at the High school complex tomorrow. 0-2 pitch popped up in the infield. They might have a play on this one. Coming under at the catcher, Colt Sparks will make the catch for the first down of the inning. Very nice play there by Colt Sparks. And as a young catcher, that's one of the first things they'll teach you. When a high fly ball like that is going to be caught by you, you have to get kind of behind it because that ball is going to be tailing back towards home plate. And that's exactly what happened there. And Colt was right under it to make the make the catch. You would know that you were a catcher back in your day, weren't you, Gary? Absolutely, and that's one of the most difficult things to do is figure out where that thing is spinning and how it's going to be tailing back towards you. Braden McKnight now at the plate, batting for the number nine position here for the Mustangs. Moscow's first pitch, breaking ball. Braden lets it go, misses outside for ball one. And McKnight has not been afraid to lay down the bunts so far this season as well as had success doing it with his quick speed. Batting from the left side, a little closer to that first base bag as well. 1-0 pitch now. Musco to McKnight takes this pitch for a strike to even up the count at 1-1. One one. So one out, top of the third. Tate looking strong into the third inning here. Just gave up the one hit, the double to Alex McLean to lead off the second inning. 1-1, one one, a little low, takes us to... 2-1, again, our broadcast on the South Union Township Sports Network, brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiff, Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specials, SWGI in Uniontown, and Zebley Mahal of White Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. 2-1 now, must go to Braden McKnight, and the pitch from Tate, breaking ball, called strike two, even up the count at 2-2, two two, our first of Three games on the air this week. We'll also have Thursday's Laurel Highland Senior Day game for you as well against Albert Gallatin. Mustang senior class will be honored before the start of that contest. Final week of the high school baseball regular season. That pitch a little high. Tate trying to muscle up on that one, just overthrew it. Takes us full now to three and two with one out here in the top of the third. The win now coming straight in. Looking for the game's first run. 3-2 pitch. This ball hit high in the air, deep in the infield. It'll be the second baseman, Austin Grego, making the catch for the second out of the inning. So two up, two down here in the top of the third. will bring the Mustangs back to the top of their order. And Ty Sankovic, who flew out to Tanner Uphold in left field, first time up. And Ty Homer to last Tuesday. The Mustangs home contest against Elizabeth Forward. Really put a charge into one out to the right field fence up at Laurel Highlands. First pitch from Tate to Sank. Misses for ball one. And so far, Tate making his dad Kenny look pretty good on the decision to start him here today. Oh, 
And a 1-0 on the way to the breaking ball. Misses low and outside. Takes us to 2-0. And we saw a Tate and Uniontown senior day game against Mount Pleasant get the start on the mound. Picked up the win against the Vikings a week ago Friday. Game we had for you here on WMBS. 2-0 on the way. Fouled back by Sack. Takes us to 2-1. Again, he's young. Only a sophomore. Bright future ahead. His grandfather, by the way, Gary, not sure if you know this, Bill Jackson from Jackson Farms Dairy Store. I do. Also the organizer of the Fayette County Fair. Excellent guy, Bill. Known him for several years. 2-1 on the way. That ball dipping low and outside takes us to 3-1. He just gave me a hankering for some Jackson Farm ice cream. Yes, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> on a warm day like today, it would taste pretty good. Maybe you can grab some and take some home to Nina tonight. Sure, she'd appreciate that as well. 3 1 on the way. Fouled back again by Seng. Takes us 4 to 3 and 2. They have a catchy jingle, too. Absolutely. So, three balls, two strikes. Two outs, top of the third. Must go to Sankovic in a scoreless game. Three two pitch, low for ball four, and Laurel Highlands a base runner. Here with two outs in the top of the third. Second base runner for the Mustangs, and that's going to bring up CJ Gesk. Swang through one to, for the strikeout back in the first inning, but had some nice cuts. One of two strikeout victims of Musco so far in this game, coming in with a 286 average and five RBIs. Playing right field here today. Now you have Tate on the mound, have a clean look. Over it sank at first base. First pitch here to CJ. A little low for ball one. So unofficially, I have him at 50, 48 pitches. Mustangs have made him work so far. Had some long counts. Still short of the midway point of this game. That pitch, a late called strike there on CJ. Big hole between first and second out there as the infield for the Red Raiders shifted all the way around to the left side, almost the major league shift that you've been seeing lately. 1-1 one, one pitch hit high in the air right down the right field line, charging over to the line, but able to make a play there as Eric Odom ends up a foul ball. Takes the count to one and two. Red Raiders trying to get out of the inning with no damage done. Mustangs trying to score the game's first run, and Sankovic plenty of speed over at first base. And now Gask will have to protect with two strikes on. One ball, two strikes. Must go on the mound, working from the stretch. Now uh, we'll send it over on first base side. Clay Dean putting the tag on, but back safely over at first to sink. His father telling him to get back. Yes, <laughs> who's the first base coach. One, two again. Must go to Gesk and CJ, another nubber just going foul on the right side. This one over the fence and out of play. Mentioned good crowd down both lines here at Bailey Park this afternoon. Maroon and white down yeah. the third baseline. Red, white, and blue down the first baseline. The, the Red Raiders are soaking up the sun over here. Yes. <laughs> as we're, we are. We're barely shaded. At least I am a little bit. You're more in the sun than I am at this point of the game. Get a little bit of the dugout protection where I'm located at. Another two-strike pitch must go to Gesk. This one fouled off. Right back into the fence. Keeps us at one and two. And four o'clock start tomorrow for the Mustangs and the Red Raiders over at Laurel Highlands. This one might not be over by then. No. <laughs> Mustangs will also play a game on Wednesday this week at Thomas Jefferson. There'll be a 430 start. No broadcast though on Wednesday for us. 
throw over to first. Head first slide back safely there again from Sink. Thomas Jefferson, one of the few fields around the WPIL without electricity. Despite all the improvements they've made over there, they don't have power at their field. That's kind of amazing. Yes. We've done a game or two there over the years. Just had to run power for my car. Swing get a miss, and that's strike three to end the inning. So the third strikeout for Tate Musco, setting down C.J. Guest in the top half of the third, and we're still scoreless going to the bottom of the third. C.R. Proniger High School Sports Day broadcast presented by Penn Residential, Central Marcom, and Amy's Quilt Room. Quilts are full of love in every stitch, but do you know how to make one? Amy's Quilt Room is a full-service quilt shop located in Uniontown, offering retail goods and an ample sewing classroom. The retail shop at Amy's Quilt Room features a variety of high-quality fabrics, notions, patterns, and more. Inspiration will spark the moment you walk through the door. Piece that inspiration into a project in the spacious classroom at Amy's Quilt Room, where sewers of all skill levels, from beginners to advanced, are welcome. Amy's Quilt Room hosts a rotating calendar of quilting and sewing classes, open sews, embroidery, technique, and specialty classes. If you're enthusiastic about sewing, you may even want to consider joining the Quilty Pleasures Quilt Club at Amy's Quilt Room. Members of the Quilty Pleasures Quilt Club enjoy discounts on merchandise, member-exclusive events, and much more. At Amy's Quilt Room, you'll stitch fabric and friendship into every project. Join the Patchwork family at Amy's Quilt Room. Visit amysquiltroom.com or stop in 20 West Penn Street in Uniontown. Amy's Quilt Room, a fresh and modern twist to a timeless tradition. Good times and good food. It's all at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown, family-owned and operated. Potter's has been a staple in the Uniontown community since 1950. So get out of the house and make your next night out at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown. Call them up at 724-438-9835. That's 724-438-9835. Or visit Potter's on Facebook. We'll see you at Potter's. Austin Grego, Tanner Uphold, and Christian Thomas do up for Uniontown here in the bottom of the third inning. Still scoreless, Red Raiders and the Mustangs. Joe Chambers and Tate Musco both pitching well for their respective teams so far this afternoon. And Joe will wind and fire the first pitch here to Austin Grego. Misses low for ball one. Grego coming in with a 118 average and two RBIs for the sophomore second baseman. What are the pitch counts at, Gary, at this portion of the game if you have them? I have uh, Joe at 26 coming into this, 25 coming into the inning. There's, There's Grego with a well-hit ball to right center, but jumping and making the grab. C.J. Gesk out in right for the first down of the inning. So Gesk retired Wyatt Nails to end the second and retires Austin Grego to start the third. Puts him at 27 pitches and finishing the third for Tate Musco. He was up to 53. So Chambers in a little better position in the pitch count department than Tate Musco is at this juncture, and you'd have to think you might see Hunter Chuck check in relief if needed. There's a little nubber, and that one's going to go over the head of Tyler Sankovic or into left center field. Relay coming in there from Brayden McKnight, and that's the first hit of the afternoon for the Uniontown Red Raiders. Tanner Uphold in that ninth spot gets things going for the Red Raiders. And at the top of the order, due up next, Christian Thomas grounded out back to Chambers first time up. We have one out as we operate here in the bottom of the third inning. Uniontown and Laurel Highland scoreless. Brian Rosak along with Gary Frankhauser. Frank Kuhl Frank helping us out with our score hub. Jerry Dupay behind the camera. Nick Barczyk back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. This is Christian Thomas talks to Uniontown head coach Kenny Musco. See if we see some action on the base pads for the Red Raiders. Uphold. I believe has some pretty good speed. Yes, he does. Good contact hitter at the plate in Christian Thomas. Tanner also a pretty good basketball player as well for Rob Kesmarski's squad. First pitch, Christian Thomas. A little high and inside for ball one. And we'll see how risky the Red Raiders are with uphold over at first. Throw back there from Chambers trying to get uphold leaning the other way. Tanner able to get back safely. The runs tough to come by so far this afternoon. Pitch a little inside. Oh, call strike. A call strike, yeah. Late call there for Mr. Schottenheimer behind home plates. Might have bunted through that one. Count even out one and one. But you had uphold well off the bag. Over at first after that last pitch. 
Joe again from the stretch. Now the 1-1 one -one to Christian Thomas, and Thomas hitting this one high down the right field line, charging, diving, and unable to come up with it. C.J. Guest out there on the right. Foul territory, but yep. great effort by C.J. Guest trying to make that catch for the second out. But once again, Joe Chambers working in front now of Christian Thomas. Christian had a nine-pitch at bat his first time up, fouled a bunch of pitches off. Count out one and two. Now Joe looking into Patrick Cavanaugh. Quick throw over to first, and Joe has shown he has a pretty good pickoff move over the years, but head first slide back safely there again from Tanner Uppel. Joe without a strikeout so far this afternoon. Trying to make Thomas his first victim. And Joe another look over the shoulder. One, two, high and inside. Takes us to two and two. Went to the breaking ball, just slipped out of his hand a little bit. That just came inside high. Now two and two. Chambers to Thomas. Another throw over to first. Had him little, leaning. Yeah, a little closer that time. He was definitely that. going on that pitch. He, had, he was already taking a little lean towards second base. And Coach Mosco has shown he's an aggressive coach over the years. And he'll send up hole this time. Pitch fastball high and inside. Throw down to second. Close play and safe Whoa. at second. Just under the tag. At least according to base umpire Mark Grant as wow. Tanner Uphold stolen base. I'd like to see that one on instant replay. But a throw was a little bit high. But it was there in plenty of time. And Sankovic got that tag down quickly. But safe is the call. Bang, bang, play, and now gonna... uphold in scoring position, and Coach Yeoman out to talk to home plate umpire Bill Schottenheimer about that one. I don't think that's anything that you could even appeal from home plate, but, man, great throw there by yeah. Cavanaugh. Strong throw was there in plenty of time, but stolen base. Yeah, they had it read well because Chambers threw a fastball about as hard as he could there, anticipating uphold to run, and now they count at two and two. Joe looks back at second. Pitch on the way. Another fastball swing and a miss, and that is strike three. Down goes Christian Thomas. First strike out of the game for Joe Chambers, and now two outs here in the bottom half of the third inning. But this game's still scoreless. Brings up Hunter Chuckcheck. He was one of the three in a row that grounded out to first base, so Mustangs need to shift around the outfield, I think, a little bit to right field. First pitch to Chuck Jack in there for a strike, 0-1. Hunter coming in with a 245 average. Has driven in 10 runs, one of three Red Raiders seniors on this team. Playing shortstop to start the afternoon for the Red Raiders. 0-1 now, Thomas to Chuck Jack, low in the dirt. Good block there from Patrick Cavanaugh. Single from Chuck Jack, could score. Tanner Uphold has the lone Uniontown hit so far this afternoon. Chambers, another glance back at second. Now step off the mound. For the count at one and one. Gather himself a little bit. Good, good idea. Take a deep breath. Work on this batter. One one on the way. Breaking ball just missed. Takes us to two and one. Mentioned a couple of times already this year, Gary, but great to see all the renovations they're making down here to Bailey Park as well. New sheepskin trail going in in the outfield. Should be ready in a couple of months and some major renovations planned to the park and the baseball field over the next couple of years as well. Chuck check here, ground ball, tough play. O'Brien with a little body there to knock the ball down, flip it off to Joe Chambers for the third out of the inning. So the Red Raiders end up stranding Tanner Uphold. We're still scoreless after three. Uniontown and Laurel Highlands on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. Broadcast presented by Penn Residential, Central Marcom, and Amy's Quilt Room. Going on now, it's the Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $2.23 a month. Earth payment and security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit charperchevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. We stick to GMF, a well-qualified individual at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months of 2,999 cash rate equity and GMLE loyalty or GMLE conquest. Payment is for tax, title, and fees. Earth payment and security deposit waived. Sale ends May 31st, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. 
Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Marketing communications is an essential part of every business, but identifying an effective marketing strategy can be tricky. If you're interested in growing your business but unsure of where to start, contact Essential Marcom to begin the discussion. From business and product naming to logo design, website development, and social media, Central Marcom collaborates with local startups and existing businesses to maximize customer reach. Learn more about the Essential Marcom capabilities and view their portfolio at EssentialMarcom.com. That's E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-M-A-R-C-O-M.com or by contacting Dana at Dana at EssentialMarcom.com. Welcome back to Bailey Park. Tate Musco finishing up his warm-ups here for the top half of the fourth inning. Both teams stranding a runner at second base. Both teams with just one hit. Going here to the top of the fourth inning, Carson D'Amico, Alex McLean, and Braden O'Brien do up for the, for the Mustangs. Tate must go unofficially at 53 pitches through three innings. D'Amico trying to get things started. He grounded two second his first time up, hit it sharply, looks at ball one. Red Raiders playing straight up all the way around. For Carson D'Amico, the center fielder for the Mustang, there's ball two low and inside. Need base runners if you're either team. Try to move some players around with minimal outs. 2-1, 2 2-0 pitch. Strike on the inside corner. This Carson D'Amico tried to step out of the way of that, but Musco gets the call on the inside corner. Good to see Union Town Head basketball coach Rob Kesmarski here today as well, along with assistant athletic director Harry Kaufman. Jeremy Brain also in the house. 2-1 pitch, shine outside, 3-1 and one now. A lot of folks coming out for this one, Gary, this afternoon. D'Amico needs to look for something in the zone here and or get on any way he can. He could be selective at 3-1. and one. And coming in with an average close to 400 at 396, certainly has been productive throughout the course of the season. Oh, got another call on the outside corner as D'Amico was on his way to first again. So, count run full. A late call there. D'Amico facing Musco's 3-2 pitch. Here it is. Swing and a miss for strike three. So, coming back after a 3-1 count, Tate Musco with a big strikeout to start the fourth inning brings up Alex McLean. He's continued to impress me, Gary. Four strikeouts now for Tate. Just gave up that one hit to Alex McLean to start the second. He shut down the Mustangs so far, and McLean now at the plates. Came in with a 360 average, 13 RBIs. Got a good rip off of Musco first time. Let's see if he can do it again. There's he a, does. another high fly ball, deep center field, going back, going. It's gone. Alex McLean drives one deep to left center field, takes it out of here, and puts the Mustangs on the board one to nothing. That was first pitch swinging, and again, McLean got a good piece of the baseball the first time he faced Musco with that double to right center field. Now homers over the left center field wall. First homer of the season for Alex McLean, and the Mustang dug out into it now as Laurel Highlands leads one to nothing. And the wind's even blowing in, Brian. Yes. That thing had a big charge to it. It was going to be close, I figured, right off the bat. On that rip to left center, so Laurel Island striking first here this afternoon. Brayden O'Brien will come to the plate with just one out. Musco still in the windup. Swing and a miss, and that hit Schottenheimer in the chest that time. He made a throw. There you go. I'm not sure. Maybe he just liked to talk to the pitchers. Yep. In this one of three, Section 3 4A games, Belvernon and Elizabeth Ford. Leps need a sweep over the Warriors to make the playoffs, and Ringgold at West Mifflin this afternoon. 
So 0 and 1 to Braden O'Brien with the Mustangs getting on the board here in the top of the fourth by way of a home run. That's high and outside. A couple other local games: Charlotte at Yacht, Carmichael's at Beth Center. Some conferences have actually wrapped up play already, with no scheduled conference games this week. And the playoff pairings come out on Friday. 1-1 one, one pitch, and it's fouled off the screen behind home plate for a one ball, two strike count. Among the non-conference games today, Greensburg-Salem at Connellsville, Mapletown at Bentworth, Manesson at Frazier, Norwin at North Allegheny, Thomas Jefferson at Keystone Oaks. Musco looking for the second out of the inning. O'Brien trying to keep things moving for the Mustangs in time called as O'Brien didn't like the deliberate effect of Tate Musco on the mound. Here's the pitch. There's a ground ball to third, little ground ball up with it and strong throw over. Come off the bag though, and that's going to be a safe call at first base. So Christian Thomas just pulls Dean off first base, and we're going to have to call that E5. The Mustangs get another base runner trying to build on that solo home run from Alex McLean here in the top of the fourth. Now Brad Yeoman calling time. I have a little chat here with Joe have, Chambers who struck out swinging first time up. Going to have a pinch runner or a courtesy runner, whatever you want to call it. Well, here would be base. a pinch runner for O'Brien who's playing first base. But again, the re-entry rule allows him to come back in. Correct. So let's see who they send out. But whoever you bring in to run, though, in this situation would not be eligible to come back into the game. Looks like Carney, number eight. Correct. Dan Carney coming on a run. And now Kenny must go out as well, talking to his son Tate and also catcher Colton Sparks. And among the playoff qualifiers out of Section 1, that section's finished up play. North Catholic, Highlands, Indiana, and knock all in. Montour likely to be the number one seed. They're 12 and 0 out of section two and four, a 15 and two overall. Beavers in, but the other couple of playoff spots still up for grabs. You have Quaker Valley at four and six, Blackhawk three and six, Central Valley three and six, Average three and seven, Newcastle two and eight, all still mathematically alive. And of course, out of section three, West Mifflin, Laurel Highlands, and Uniontown all in. And then that fourth spot up for grabs between Elizabeth Forward, Bell Vernon, and Ringgold. So Joe Chambers will step in to face Tate Musco as Carney is on to pinch run for O'Brien, who is on by way of the error. Musco clean look now over at Carney over at first. And Joe squares around a bunt and fouls it, off. fouls it back. In our coverage area, Connellsville and California have also locked up WPIL playoff spots. Congratulations to them. The Frazier girls softball team, by the way, they're ranked number one in the WPIL, one of the top teams in the state. Congratulations to them. They always produce a good program up there in Periopolis on the softball side. 0-1 pitch, squaring again and bunted back to the pitcher. Must go on to second, and nice play to get the lead runner. Just bunted a little too hard by Joe and got back to the pitcher, and Tate turned quickly, makes the throw to second base for the force out there. So that'll leave Chambers on at first. And we're going to have a courtesy runner for him. It's actually a courtesy runner, not a pinch runner, since it is the pitcher. And that'll be 15, Caleb Janowski on the run. So, so Janowski nice, would be able to re-enter. Nice play there by Tate Musco. Had to make a long throw. That ball was bunted back to him in the shade area just in Fair territory down the first baseline. That's another heady play from the sophomore pitcher for Union Town. Brings up Frank Kula. Hit a hard hit ball to center field. Looks at strike one. He's due for a hit, Gary. He's been snake bit. Hit the ball hard several times against Elizabeth Forward last week. Nothing to show for it. Another hard hit ball here this afternoon. That's ball inside, so... One and one now to Frank Kula with two outs here in the inning with the Mustangs on the board, courtesy of the Alex McLean long home run to left center. We saw Kula homer earlier on this year down at Hutchinson against Ringgold. One-one pitch. He bunts it down the third baseline, and that's going to go foul. 
Good job there by Christian Thomas to let that go foul, but also a great idea by Frank Kula as Thomas was playing deep. Yeah, that one goes a little farther right there, Gary. I think Kula's on, and you also have the courtesy runner, Yanoski, safe over at second as well. So now with a one ball, two strike count. Frank's going to have to swing away here. Two outs in the inning. Here's the pitch. High and inside. Two and two. And Mustangs leading one to nothing on the solo home run from Alex McClain. Came with one out here in the top of the fourth. Left-handed hitting Frank Kula. From the stretch, Musco brings it. Swing and a miss. Four strike three. So Tate limits it to just the one run, but it's the home run by Alex McClain that gives the Mustangs a one nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the fourth on the C. Harper Sports Day. Brought to you by Penn Residential, Central Marcom, and Amy's Quilt Room. Does your car sound like it's saying, trade me in, trade me in, every time you start it up? Well, go to Ford of Uniontown and trade it in. That's right, your Uniontown Ford dealer is ready to assist you with a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV purchase. Ford of Uniontown has all the deals, all the inventory, and they are ready to deal. It has never been a better time to buy a Ford. Service is their top priority. No matter where you purchase your Ford car or truck, Ford of Uniontown will be happy to service it for you. They offer Ford trained technicians, Ford certified parts and service, one year, 12,000 mile parts warranties, and new state of the art service equipment. Call or stop in today to see the hometown service of Ford of Uniontown, Route 40 West across from Applebee's. So listen to your car the next time you hear it say, trade me in, trade me in. Ford of Uniontown, Route 40 at the top of the hill. Mom Maruka's Pizza Shop, located at 624 Barton Mill Road in Uniontown, is your prime place to enjoy local high school sports. Mom Maruka's is family-owned and operated where pride of ownership certainly shows. The Sampson family carries on the tradition of homemade pizza, salads, subs, and wings. Mom Maruka's is open Monday through Saturday, 4 to 10, for indoor-outdoor dining and takeout. Call 724-438-9066 or visit mommarukapizza.com for their menu. Two up here for Uniontown in the home half of the fourth inning. Tate Musco, Colt Sparks, and Clay Dean. As now, Joe Chambers will work with that one-run lead. Joe just at 38 pitches through three innings, Brian. Has been effective as well on the mound on the Laurel Highland side. As you say, he's kept the pitch count down. Good chance he might be able to finish it off this afternoon for the Mustangs. Curveball in for a strike to Tate Musco. Here's the 0-1. Strike two in there on the breaking pitch again. O2 now to Tate Musco. Mustangs playing straight away for Tate. Swing and a miss at another breaking pitch for strike three, and he's tagged out as the ball hit the dirt. He caught it, but it did hit the dirt, so we'll have to allow for the tag out. But it's a swinging strikeout now back on to three back. pitches. Yeah, back to back strikeouts now for Joe, who went the first two and two thirds innings without one so far. Well, actually, Chuck Check grounded the first the last batter. Of the oh, yeah, my bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, Thomas was retired. Two strikeouts yep. anyway for. Joe I don't Chambers. know what I'm looking at there. And that'll bring up Colt Sparks. He grounded to first, his first time up in the second inning. Coach Musco made an appeal there. What was I'm not sure what the appeal would be. He caught the ball. Well, maybe he was he thinking said he, he, the he, ball hit the dirt. Well, maybe he was thinking it was a foul tip. Yeah. And if it hit the dirt, then he wouldn't be out. But they're saying no foul tip. That was the discussion. Joe going to the breaking pitches heavily here. Misses that time. Ball one to Colt Sparks. Sparks batting in that cleanup position. Here's the 1-0 and foul back. Came with the heat that time. 
We need a radar gun, Brian. Yeah. We had one for a while. Soup had one a couple yeah. years back. I think it broke. One and one. Another curveball, swing and a miss for strike two. So, Joe mixing things up here in the bottom half of the fourth inning with the breaking pitch dominating. And Sparks came in, Union Town's leading hitter, batting 326. One two pitch, curveball again for strike three. So, two straight strikeouts for Joe Chambers on seven pitches. Bell Vernon now a 4-2 third inning over Elizabeth Ford. Again, the Leps need a sweep over the Warriors to make the playoffs. Thank our buddy Jared Bozak for checking in with that score. Clay Dean will come up now with the opportunity for the Red Raiders here in the bottom of the fourth. Two outs, Mustangs on top, one to nothing. Joe looks like he's getting stronger. If that's possible at this juncture of the game. Shade now completely over home plate. First pitch right down the middle to Clay Dean. Dean came in, 225 average, homer and nine RBIs. As Gary said, walked first time up. Here's the 0-1. There's a line drive over the second baseman, Frank Kula, for a single out to right field. So Clay Dean... A little two-out lightning for the Red Raiders. Just a second hit of the afternoon for Union Town. Sander Uphold had that single to left center field with one out in the bottom of the third inning. And brings and up Eric Odom, who had a sacrifice back in the second inning. No one up, though, to run for Dean. Clay's going to stay in there. There's a ground ball to third. Up with it and over to first, scooping and up is O'Brien over there at first base on the strong throw from McLean for the third out. Nice play there by Alex McLean coming in, making the catch and throwing over to first for the third out of the inning. We'll go to the top of the fifth with the Mustangs up one to nothing on the Sea Harper Sports Day, sponsored by Penn Residential, Central Marcon, and Amy's Quilt Room. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $223 a month. Earth payment and security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit seaharperchevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMF for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months of 2,999 cash rate equity and GMLE loyalty or GMLE conquest. Payment is for tax, pedal, and fees. Earth payment and security deposit waived. Sale ends May 31st, 2022. Well supplies last. Call dealer for all other details at 724 8000 did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Farm fresh milk, straight off the farm. Jackson Farms. For farm fresh dairy products, produced, processed, packaged, and sold right there, stop in Jackson Farms Dairy Store, Route 40 at Briar Hill. Check out Jackson Farms Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, and Cheddar Cheese Curds, now available, and Cheddar Cheese coming soon. Plus delicious hot deli items to eat in or take out, and the most delectable homemade ice cream you will ever eat. Best of luck to our area teams from Jackson Farms. Patrick Cavanaugh, Braden McKnight, and Ty Sankovich do up for Laurel Highlands here in the top half of the fifth. Laurel Highlands a 1-0 lead over Uniontown. Brian Morozak along with Gary Frankhauser, Terry Dupay behind the camera. Frank Cool helping us out with our score hub. And Nick Barcheck back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. Tate Musco still on the hill for Uniontown. First pitch to Pat Cavanaugh. Misses outside for ball one. Cavanaugh popped up to catcher Colton Sparks. First time up back in the third inning. Musco working into the fifth inning. It's pitched well. 1-0, swing and a miss there from Pat, who came in with a 227 average and seven RBIs. Junior catcher for the Mustangs. Saw Pat's dad, Michael, before the start of the game. Watching over there on the Laurel Island side. Actually standing right by the dugout right now. 1-1 one, one on the way. Ooh. High and inside. Did it clip him? No. A little chin music. Yeah, it's more than a little chin music there. Almost knocking down Pat. Takes the count now to two and one. 
What's Tate's pitch count at right now, Gary? 74. Okay. And here at the top of the fifth, limited to 100. 2-1 two pitch on the way. That one fouled off by Pat. Takes us to 2-2. Two and two. Parked way far away today, Gary, after getting hit here last Monday. Did you? Yeah. A nice little dent in the side of my car. How could you tell? 2-2 <laughs> two, two now. Must go to Kavanaugh. Time call. I parked behind the snack bar, and I thought it was, like, shaded by the actual snack bar here last Monday. And ball actually went over the snack bar right into the side of my car. Well, now you don't have to worry about it. No, I don't have to worry about it. 2-2 two, two on the way. A little low. Takes us to 3-2. and two. Must go to Kavanaugh. It's been a nice afternoon for high school baseball action. We'll have game four of the NHL first-round playoff series between the Penguins and Rangers on WMES tonight starting at 7 o'clock. That was a crazy game. Yes, they've Saturday been some night. crazy games in this series. Of course, triple overtime in game one. Rangers took game two in a back-and-forth game. 3-1 by the Pens, and that ball ripped foul on the left side there by Kavanaugh. That's a screamer. Barreled that one out yes. just way out in front of it. Count full now, three and two. Nobody out here, top of the fifth. And a three-two pitch must go to Kavanaugh. This one golfed foul. Out of play. Good at bat here for Kavanaugh. Staying alive. Making Musco throw a lot of pitches. Tate shaking off one. Another 3-2 on the way to Kavanaugh. And Kavanaugh just again staying got a piece. Yep. A little nubber. That was a in the dirt ball he just got a piece of. And I would think, Gary, if you got to a point in this game where Musco reached 100 pitches and Uniontown might be in striking distance or maybe even in the lead, would you make the move for Christian Thomas just to try to solidify things, maybe if you're leading? I definitely would think so. You definitely want to play each game one at a time and win the game you're in. 3-2 again fouled off by Kavanaugh. It's been a long at bat. Must go to Kavanaugh. Again, we're here in the top of the fifth. Laurel Highlands leading one to nothing. Nine pitches so far to Kavanaugh. Leading off here in the top half of the fifth. Must go getting close to the mid-80 range right now as far as pitches thrown in this game. Another 3-2 on the way again, and this one hit foul. I had that one, Brian. Yep. It's right at us. Give Patrick a lot of credit staying alive. Tate Musco so far. Four strikeouts for Uniontown. Has not issued a walk either. Actually, yes, one walk to Sankovic in the third. Another 3 2 pitch here to Kavanaugh's. Musco winds and fires, and that's ball four. Great at bat yep. there by Patrick Kavanaugh. 11 pitches, draws the walk. You get a courtesy runner likely here. For the catcher, it will be 16 coming out there again. Tristan McCoy running this time for Kavanaugh. What's the updated pitch count now, Gary? Oh, uh, 82. 82 for Musco. And now Braden McKnight, who flew out to second baseman Austin Grego, first time up, comes to the plate. McKnight coming into the game with a 214 average and again has been successful laying down bunts for hits this year. He's having a long talk with Brad Yeoman as Kenny Musco talks to his son Tate. I think they're going to take him out. Yep. We're going to see a pitching change here for Uniontown. So we'll take a timeout as well. Looks like the new pitcher is going to be Clay Dean. We're back to tell you about Dean right after this. Mustangs a 1-0 lead over the Red Raiders. Here in the CR Prada Group High School Sports Day. Broadcast presented by Penn Residential Central Marcom and Amy's Quilt Room. On the go? No time to stop? That's when you'll love Peach and Pharmacy's curbside pickup at Peach and Market in downtown Connellsville. Next time you have a prescription to get, let Peach and Pharmacy make it easy for you. Call ahead at 724-626-9600 or send a message. Let friendly curbside pickup keep you right where you want to be, in the driver's seat. Peach and Pharmacy. 
your local pharmacy. Penn Residential is a human services agency providing around-the-clock services and supports for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Their residential homes are located in local communities to offer residents quality care while also encouraging autonomy. They're a fast-growing company offering rewarding employment opportunities to direct support professionals interested in making positive impacts in the lives of others. The SP positions start at $16 an hour and will receive a full benefit package after 90 days. For more information about current career opportunities, visit PennResidentialINC.com slash career. Going on now at the other Chevy East. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $223 a month. First payment and security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevyEast.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease it through GMF for well-qualified individuals at 10000 miles per year. 24 months at 2999 cash rate equity and family loyalty or family conquest. Payment is for tax, title, and fees. First payment and security deposit waived. Sale ends May 31st, 2022. Well supplies last. Call dealer for all other details at 724-668-2231. Clay Dean is the new Uniontown pitcher. Looks like a... Straight switch, Tate Musco now playing first base for Dean. His seventh appearance of the season has not factored in any decisions. Does have one save, has worked 11 and two-thirds innings, given up eight hits, six runs, five of them earned, struck out 11, walked nine, and a flat three ERA so far this season for Dean. And the last warm-up pitch from Dean hit Sparks awkwardly, and now they're going to have to attend to him. I think he's going to shake it off, though. He Gladys. told the trainer, just get away. Yep. Gladys <laughs> I'm all right. Malka coming out to check on Clay. Been a trainer here at Union Town the last probably four or five years now. The tools of ignorance are appropriately named. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now Braden McKnight will step in facing Clay Dean. So oh. the Mustangs, we're seeing a lot of the lefty must go. Now a totally different look. The righty, Clay Dean. Up tight at third is Christian Thomas looking for the potential bunt here from McKnight. And nobody outs. As we work here in the top half of the fifth inning, Mustangs a one to nothing lead. Dean's first pitch and showing bunt. That one fouled off. That caught Sparks again. Yes. Sparks can't catch a break right now. Seeing a lot of action. Giving him time. Good fastball there by Dean. Brought the heat early. Count 0-1. Behind McKnight, the top of the order for the Mustangs. Big lead over there at first by the courtesy runner. Dean, another glance over at first. 0-1 pitch to Braden McKnight. Pitch missed, throw back down to first. Head first slide back safely there from McCoy, the courtesy runner. Count one and one. Brad Yeoman confirming that as well. So Sparks shaking off those errant throws, makes a strong throw down to first. Thought it might have been a good opportunity to run for the Mustangs, but. Dean, another throw over to first, just making sure McCoy's back to the bag. There's nobody out here in this top of the fifth inning. Good opportunity for the Mustangs to. Get a little insurance and increase the lead. Nice lead over there by McCoy. Dean, another 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball, this one bunted foul. Takes us to 1-2. and two. Now McKnight will have to swing away. Mustangs will start their third trek through the order after Braden McKnight. And Dean now 1-2. Two McKnights and a healthy leadoff first for McCoy. Dean looks in that direction over the shoulder. Refocuses from the stretch. One, two pitch on the way. Fastball misses low. And we're even at two and two. I see some hit and run here by yep. the Mustangs. Sure, McKnight's going to be looking for something to put the bat on. Watch McCoy. Counts at 2-2. Two 2-2 two. Two, two pitch. Runner staying right now, and McKnight gets hit in the back. Wow. That's a different kind of hit and run. Yes. That went right in the middle of the number five in his back. Might have a red welt for a couple days. 
So it's a hard way to get the sacrifice. Yes, it is. But It'll also it. gets himself on base. Yep. You have two on, nobody out now in the top of the fifth. Left-handed hitter Sankovic now might be an opportunity here to let him hit away because he could pull it. But I think Coach Yeoman also inclined to use the bunt. A homer on Tuesday has started to heat up now at the plate, batting 278 with a homer and three RBIs. Walk last time up. Had a well-hit ball that was caught by Tanner Uphold back in the first inning. Actually, that led off the game. Coach Yeoman takes advantage of the timeout to make sure Sankovic has his signals correct. A big spot in this game as well for Clay Dean. Coming on in relief of Tate Musco. Got the start and really pitched well. Just giving up the... Home run over the left center field wall from Alex McLean back in the fourth inning. Thomas playing deep at third. Good opportunity to bunt it down this way, and that's in the dirt. Almost gets away from Sparks, but he makes a nice play back there to smother it. Count 1-0 and oh. to Dean not trying to give Sankovic an opportunity to lay down a bunt, but you still have to throw something around the strike zone. If you want to try to make some progress here against Ty Sankovic, one of the Mustangs' best hitters. Count 1-0 and oh as Dean takes his time here for Union Town. 1-0 pitch, bunt laid down, but goes foul. And with that all dirt infield, Gary, That's sometimes hard. a little bit harder to get that bunt to stay fair, especially as quick as that dirt's running here this afternoon. Left-handed batter trying to bunt it down the third base line. Puts the spin towards the foul side also. Correct. And that just had no chance to stay fair. Yeah, a lot of those bunts, if you're playing over at Laurel Highlands tomorrow, will settle down a little nicer. In the grass infield. Yeah. Sometimes they grow it high over there. Count one and one. Sank showing bunt again. Dean now steps off. He might show and then swing. I agree. Trying to get the guys in a little bit. Uniontown not baiting too much. Thomas over at third, must go over at first. Need to get the ball in play on the right side of the field somehow for Sankovic. Now stepping back and throws back to second. Back in is McCoy. Another long at bat. Actually, haven't had too many pitches thrown here from Dean to Sankovic. Count still just one and one. Dean again from the stretch. Glance back at second. 1-1 one, one pitch. That's called strike two. So now one and two. Again, you have McCoy, the courtesy runner for Kavanaugh over at second. McKnight over at first. Kavanaugh started off the inning with a walk. McCoy came on as the courtesy runner. The McKnight was hit in the back by a Dean pitch. And after Dean replaced Tate Musco on the mound after the walk was issued to Kavanaugh. As the bells toll behind us. 1-2 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Huge strikeout. Like Dean a lot of credit hanging in there. Sending down Sankovic for the first out of this top half of the fifth inning. Missed opportunity there for the Mustangs to try to advance the runners, but now with one out, might see Gesk swing away. Two strikeouts for CJ. And trying to get things going here at the plate. Came in with a 286 average and five RBIs. Both of those strikeouts against the lefty Musco. Now facing the righty Dean with two on, one out, and a pitch that really got away from Dean, missing high and inside. Nice play again by Sparks, just coming to the behind location of C.J. Gesk to catch that ball. Otherwise, that ball's back to the backstop and a lot of room behind the catcher here at Bailey Park. Dean again taking his time. Brings a fastball here that's a called strike. That was a good one. Guess. Could have bunted right down the middle. But didn't. 
Guess now looking down to Brad Yeoman down at third. Counts one and one. One out. Top of the fifth. Mustangs threatening, leading one to nothing. 1-1 one, one pitch, another fastball button lay down. It's going to stay fair. Goes to Thomas. Long throw over to first in time to get Guess, but a successful sacrifice as you move McCoy down to third and McKnight in a second. That's 5-4 to four as covering over there on first base was Austin Grego from his second base position. Tyler Musco charging hard, but perfect bunt there by C.J. Guest. Got it down the third base line. No chance to make a play at second or third. And now D'Amico with the plate set. Well, as far as batting average is concerned, D'Amico is Laurel Highland's top hitter. Coming in with a 396 average. A homer and 11 RBI so far this season. You'd have to think he's due today 0 for 2. Grounded a second in the first inning and struck out in the fourth. One of the five strikeout. No, let me see. One, two, three, four strikeout victims for oh, Musco. Had, Musco. Yeah, Musco had four, and then Dean sent down. No, Musco had five. The Sankovic strikeout was the sixth of the game. You're right. You're right. Now Dean facing D'Amico here. Two in scoring position, two outs, a one nothing lead for the Mustangs. Top of the fifth, first pitch to D'Amico, misses low for ball one. It's difficult to pitch around D'Amico here with McLean on deck too. Yeah, McLean two for two today. Two extra base hits, double in the second, home run in the fourth. I think you really have to pitch to D'Amico and just take your chances at this juncture of the game. 1-0, and D'Amico with a little number to right field, but it's going to be right at Eric Odom, who makes the catch for the third out of the inning. So a dicey top half of the fifth of the Mustangs, unable to get a run across, and it's still 1-0. Laurel Highlands over Uniontown, moving to the bottom of the fifth. Here in the CR Parada Group High School Sports Day broadcast presented by Penn Residential, the Central Marcom, and Amy's Quote Room. Casey's now offers a sit-down banquet hall at 65 Lebanon Avenue in Uniontown, and you can seat up to 50 people with kitchen facilities available. Bring your own food or let Casey's fine staff cater it for you. A perfect intimate setting for your small affair, such as showers, reunions, or after funeral dinners. For all information, phone 724-550-4126. That's 724-550-4126. 724-550-4126 for Casey Sports Cap. Amy's Quilt Room is a full-service quilt room located in Uniontown, offering retail goods and an ample sewing classroom, welcoming sewers of all skill levels, from beginners to advanced. If you're enthusiastic about sewing, you may even want to consider joining the Quilty Pleasures Quilt Club at Amy's Quilt Room. You'll stitch fabric in friendship with every project. For more information, visit amysquiltroom.com or stop in to see them at 20 West Penn Street, Uniontown. Amy's Quilt Room, a fresh and modern twist to a timeless tradition. Penn Residential is a human services agency providing around-the-clock services and supports for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Their residential homes are located in local communities to offer residents quality care while also encouraging autonomy. They're a fast-growing company offering rewarding employment opportunities to direct support professionals interested in making positive impacts in the lives of others. The SP positions start at $16 an hour and will receive a full benefit package after 90 days. For more information about current career opportunities, visit PennResidentialINC.com slash careers. Wyatt Nails, Austin Grego, and Tanner Uphold do up for Uniontown here in the bottom of the fifth. Laurel Highland still a one to nothing lead over Uniontown. Reminder to stay tuned after our game. Her post-game show brought to you by State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman. Have a recap of this one and preview tomorrow's game two of the series between Uniontown and Laurel Highlands. Fastball misses low for ball one to Wyatt Nails, who flew out to C.J. Geskin right first time up to end the second inning. Hit it sharply. So far for the Red Raiders, just two hits so far this afternoon. The single from Dean in the fourth and the single from Uphold in the third. Joe Chambers has pitched well. 1-0, swing, get a miss. Evens things up now at 1-1. One one. To Wyatt Nails. I think the crowd has even increased more, Brian. Yes, a lot of folks getting off work. That one misses low, two and one now. Chambers to Nails. Might hear the game on the radio. See, it's a nice 
day outside. Take a little venture over to the ballpark this afternoon. 2-1. Wyatt takes that one as well. Takes us to 3-1. Hitters 7, 8, 9 due up for Uniontown here in the bottom of the fifth. Now 3 and 1, Chambers to Nails. Pitch a fastball that wide hits high in the air on the left side. Sankovic, the shortstop, getting under it, making the grab for the first out of this bottom half of the fifth inning. Another high major league pop up that the wind kind of played a little havoc with, and Sankovic, give him credit, hung in there. To make that catch, a little too shallow for the left fielder, McKnight, to come in and make the play. So, good play there by Sankovic. Austin Grego coming to the plate. Sophomore second baseman, full out to C.J. Gesk in right field as well, first time up. Chambers' first pitch here to Grego, breaking ball that Austin nubs foul on the left side. Takes us to 0-1. Grego coming in with just a 118 average, two RBIs. Nice breaking pitch there by Joe to get ahead in the count. And trying to keep it going. Three strikeouts for Joe so far this afternoon and gets a called strike there. And now Austin Grego behind 0-2. Last couple innings, Joe has use the breaking pitch a lot more effectively. 0-2 oh, again to Grego, another breaking ball, just Ooh. missed. Takes us now to one and two. Chambers coming into the game, three and one record, very impressive, 1.53 ERA. 38 strikeouts to 12 walks. One, two now on the way, fastball sent foul from Grego. Got to believe Joe would get some college looks as a pitcher and just a stellar athlete, three-sport athlete. You would think he's going to have some opportunities at the next level. I would think so as well. One, two on the way. Breaking ball called. Strike three. First backward K in the scorebook. Four total strikeouts now for Chambers. Two up, two down here in the bottom of the fifth for Uniontown. With Tanner Uphold coming to the plate, and Tanner, one of only two Red Raiders to pick up hits so far this afternoon. That single to left center field back in the third inning. Also stole second on a very close play. Trying to get a base runner for Uniontown here with two outs. Chambers first pitch, sent foul off the fence in front of us. That makes you blink. Coach Musco trying to get some help from the dugout to get that foul ball picked up down the line. 0-1, breaking ball, and Tanner pops this one up on the right side. Frank Kula, the second baseman, gets under it and makes the grab for the third out of the inning. So 1-2-3, bottom half of the fifth. Still 1-0, Laurel Highlands over Uniontown after five here on the CR Parada Group. High School Sports Day broadcast presented by Penn Residential Central Marcom and Amy's Quilt Room. Spring forward to home construction season with First Federal of Greene County. First Federal's construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project. With all the tools you need, First Federal offers construction loans, owner-builder loans, and home improvement loans. With offices in Fayette, Greene, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit with a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreene.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, and MLS number 4587. On the go? No time to stop? That's when you'll love Peach and Pharmacy's curbside pickup at Peach and Market in downtown Connellsville. Next time you have a prescription to get, let Peach and Pharmacy make it easy for you. Call ahead at 724-626-9600 or send a message. Let friendly curbside pickup keep you right where you want to be, in the driver's seat. Peach and Pharmacy. Your local pharmacy. Going on now at the other Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $2.23 a month. Earth payment and security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit seaharborchevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMF for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months of 2,999 cash rate equity and GM lease loyalty or GM lease conquest. Payment is for tax, title, and fees. Earth payment and security deposit waived. Sale ends May 31st, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all other details at 7499 8000 
Back we come as the Mustangs hold on to a 1-0 lead here as we go to the top half of the sixth inning. On in relief, Clay Dean will face Alec, Mc Alec McLean, who has provided all of the offense for the Mustangs. Two extra base hits for Alex. Stand-up double in the second inning. The only Solo, two hits for yeah, the Mustangs. Solo homer to left center field in the fourth. You're right, that's been it. As far as hits, had a couple other base runners with Kavanaugh walking, McKnight hit by a pitch. Also, Sankovic a walk back in the third. Looks at ball one high and inside, so you would think Dean might be a little bit careful with McLean. One to nothing game, though. You really can't afford to put anybody else on, though, if you're Dean at this juncture of the game. Strike on the outside corner, knee high, so nice fastball there. Not a pitch that McLean would like to hit. Mustangs have stranded five runners. A couple walks and being on with an air. That ball's inside, so two and one. Of course, our broadcast is also on the South Union Township Sports Network, brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law. South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, SWGI, and Uniontown, and Zebley Mahalo and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. There's a foul ball off the end of the bat. Goes back to the screen, evens the count at two and two. Again, these two schools to meet again tomorrow over Laurel Highlands High School, four o'clock first pitch. We'll have it in all the same outlets. We have this game on for you today. Me neither, Gary. I was just looking at the uh, South Union Joint Cooperative. F yes. <laughs> joint Cooperative. Breeze line Cable, yeah. Armstrong Cable. Of course, Gary Smith is doing a fine job down at CUTV. There's a ball outside, so it's a full count now to Alex McLean leading off here in the top half of the sixth inning, and Mustangs clinging to a one to nothing lead. We actually have a summer intern starting with us on Wednesday, Gary, from California University of Pennsylvania. Nice. Clay Dean from the windup, 3 2 offering to McLean. High and inside, so a leadoff walk for Alex McLean will get things started here for the Mustangs. And I think Coach Joman might let him swing away now. I agree. Got these guys coming up. O'Brien and Chambers been swinging the bat well as of late. And small ball really hasn't proved to be that effective so far this afternoon. McLean might be uh, on the move without the – the help of a bunt. So let's see what Coach Yeoman decides to do. He's going to square around and to bunt it back to the – oh, and gets by the third baseman, so everyone is safe. Rare mistake there from Thomas. Christian Thomas tried to barehand that, and that shows you how much we know. Yep. <laughs> Good call by Coach Yeoman to pull out the bunt. Now with nobody out, coming to the plate is going to be Joe Chambers. So we'll have to – Rule that in air. Yeah. With men now at first and second, nobody out. Will Joe be bunting? Second air committed by the Red Raiders here today. Both by Thomas. Again, it's very uncharacteristic. Christian usually pretty sure-handed out there for Uniontown. And Chambers swinging away. So nobody out. First pitch to Joe was a hittable pitch at the knees and fouled it back to the screen. So ahead in the count now, Clay Dean trying to work out of a first and second, nobody out jam here in the top of the sixth. You need to really need a double play ball right now, Gary. That's what they're calling for from the dugout. Now he's going to bunt, and he pops it up. Must go. Can't make the catch. Almost got it. Wow. What Great hustle effort. there yeah. by Tate Musco. Diving and rolling into the foul territory, and Chambers lucky to get away with that one. Really got the uniform dirty. <laughs> a yep. great effort from over at first base. Now Chambers will have to swing away. Two strikes on him. 0 oh 2. Stepping off again, Dean 
Wasn't sure what he wanted to come with. 0-2 to Joe Chambers. McLean over at second. O'Brien on first. Lead it one to nothing for Laurel Highlands over Uniontown. Need something in play here from Joe to advance the runners. At least get that runner at second base down to third with less than two outs. Here's a pitch. Strike three called. Wow. On the inside corner. So Joe goes down looking. And again, the Mustangs unable to advance the runners. Frank Kula now coming to the plate. Frank 0 for 2 today. Hard fly out to center field and a strikeout for Frank. Table set here. An opportunity to drive in a couple of runs maybe with an extra base hit. Got to believe that one run is very tenuous for the Mustangs. I agree. And the Red Raiders clearly an opportunity to come back in this game easily. Just outside for ball one. Ball skips away just slightly from Colt Sparks behind the plate. Jerry tells me that Braden McKnight warming up on the Laurel Highland side. Well, it's a little curious because Chambers is only at 61 pitches through five innings. Here's the 1-0 pitch. And fouled straight back. That's going to hit your car way back there, bud. No, it's not. <laughs> he might have meant to tell me that Chaz Lambie's warming up for Uniontown back there from his position, which would make more sense, I think. That's what he tells me, Uniontown. He was wrong on Laurel. It's Uniontown. So Chaz now, Lambie. Frank Kula, one and one is the count. One out. Runners on first and second here in the top of the six. Mustangs on top. Just one to nothing. Here's the pitch. Breaking pitch. Ja, ooh, gets a call for strike two. A little generous there, I have to say. Oh, no. yeah, you're right on that. One ball, two strikes. Kula trying to put it in play. Big hole between first and second again for the left-handed hitting Frank Kula. Brad Yeoman calling time to talk to Frank. Maybe just trying to clear his mind after yeah. that last strike call. But good job by Clay Dean coming in in relief. And settled things down. Yeah. Looked like it might be a little rocky early on. In that fifth inning also, when the Mustangs had numerous runners on, unable to put anything across and stranding two. None of them have been hits, the base runners. Over the last couple of innings, last hit for Laurel Highlands was the home run for McLean back in the fourth inning. Both teams have been hitting much better late in the season also. That's just a credit to the pitching. Strike three called. Wow. So great job by Clay Dean after two runners on, nobody out. Gets two strikeouts looking. Let's bring up Patrick Cavanaugh. Popped up to the catcher in the third inning, and he walked in the fifth after a, I think it was a, like a nine pitch at bat. Correct. That's low and insides for ball one. Mustang's been stranding a lot of runners here last couple of innings as well. Two stranded in the fourth, or two stranded in the fifth, one in the fourth, one in the third. And more importantly, runners on with nobody out. Yeah, one in the second. Yeah, you had McLean on with a double and nobody out in the second. Couldn't get him around. There's a little check swing foul ball down the right side. Excuse me, foul ball by Pat. Sankovic got on with a walk with two outs in the third. Couldn't get him around. O'Brien on on an air with one out in the fourth. Couldn't get him around. And then you had McCoy, or check that, Kavanaugh walk. McCoy on the run. McKnight hit by a pitch. Nobody out with two on in the fifth, and they couldn't get him around. Same situation here in the sixth. But the inning not done yet. Time call by Kavanaugh. 
One ball, one strike. Bat looking for something that he can put in play. Long stretch, still time. Kavanaugh just standing in there. Let's see what we're gonna have. What's the what's the call? Well, time was called, but I don't know who called the initial time. The Kavanaugh stepped out. Now we're ready to play. Count it one and one. One one pitch. Inside and high, two and one. Mustangs trying to do something here with two outs. Two strikeouts by Dean. Very strong effort so far here in the sixth. That's in the dirt. Good stop again by Spark. So three and one now. And if Uniontown would find a way back, Gary, in this game, you'd have to look on the Laurel Highland side at some of these stranded runners so far this afternoon. There's very many opportunities, just cannot get the clutch hit. They have to get by Joe Chambers, though, first. I haven't been able to do that so far this afternoon. 3-1 pitch. Strike called. So full count now to Patrick Cavanaugh. Runners will be on their horse. I think Patrick knew that was a strike. Might get another one here from Dean. Has to be ready to hit. Runners will take off on the pitch. There they go. That's in the dirt, so ball four. Another good at bat by Cavanaugh, drawing two walks in a row. Loads them up, and that's going to bring up Braden McKnight, the ninth batter in the order for the Mustangs. See if we had a pitching change, your whole infield coming in. Again, you had Chaz Lambie warming up. Let's see if they make a move to Lambie. A left-hander to face McKnight. So with that, we'll step aside for Are we going to get a pitching out? change, though, I for believe sure? so. Maybe not. Let's see. So let's no, he's, he's, just, he's just telling them what to do. Yeah. So let's wait so you're before right. we take the break. Yeah, I'm, you're exactly right. I was thinking for sure they were going to go to a pitching change, so we'll keep it right here. They're going to stick with Dean, it looks like. He's shown the ability to put the Mustangs down. So McKnight now with the opportunity. He flew out to the second baseman back in the third and took one right in the back in the fifth inning. He might be okay with doing that again, be an RBI. Step whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And runs tough to come by, just a one to nothing lead. For Laurel Highlands over Uniontown, but once again, table set for the Mustangs. Bases loaded as they work here in the top of the sixth. Two walks in the inning. The only blemish on the record for Dean, and he's going to be working from the stretch. Well, Brian also got on via an air. Strike on the outside corner, so looked like. McKnight was taking that pitch. I think if you're Coach Musco, you're telling Dean, you got to throw some strikes in the situation. Make him get the bat off the shoulder. Mustangs have not proven the ability to come in with the clutch hit just yet. Here's McKnight facing an 0-1 pitch. Fouled back, but caught by Sparks. So 0-2. Dean working ahead now. He well, can really be getting out of a jam here. And he can make McKnight chase in this position. Make him hit his pitch. Advantage Dean for sure in this situation. Here's the 0-2 in the dirt. It gets away and no chance to advance. Great stop there by Colt Sparks. That's the thing. You want to try to get him to chase, but you can't throw a wild either and then allow a run to possibly score there on a wild pitch. That almost happened if it wasn't for a great block there from Colt Sparks. Kind of backhanded that one, too, so. One, two, offering. Here's the pitch. Foul back. So, keeping life there is Braden McKnight. Been a fun game again this afternoon, Gary. Pitcher's duel. 
Started off between Musco and Chambers. Chambers still on the hill for Laurel Highlands, now facing Clay Dean, who came on in relief of Musco on the Uniontown side. Dean with the pitch. Inside for ball two. Might have got him up, almost. Braden could have leaned into that one, maybe. And we're on game two at 4 o'clock tomorrow between these two schools. Both playoff bound, but yep. still important games when you're looking at the seedings that come out Friday. Here's a 2-2. That's in a dirt, and that gets by him this They're time. They're sending him. They're sending him this time. No chance for Sparks. And that ball comes all the way over here in front of us down the third base line. So the Mustangs somehow get a run across. Full count also, but the runners are not forced at this situation. They, everyone moved up a station. So on at third is O'Brien. That was the issue. Second was, was Kavanaugh, but now a courtesy runner for Kavanaugh. That was the issue I was discussing earlier, Gary. End up trying to get him to chase, and you throw it a little bit too wild. It gets away, and you give up a run nonetheless. 3-2 pitch. There's another foul ball shipped into the midget league field behind us. So... Good at bat by Braden McKnight. Mustangs with a run across without a hit. Tim Mahoney checking in. Our buddy John Marietta watching as well. One of our high school sports sponsors. 3-2 pitch once again. There's a high fly ball. That's going to be in fair territory. Coming over and making the catch, a shortstop, Hunter Chuckcheck, to end the inning. But the Mustangs do get one across on no hits. They do leave two more on, and we'll go to the bottom of the six with the Mustangs now with a 2 to nothing lead here on the Sea Harper Sports Day, sponsored by Penn Residential, Central Marcom, and Amy's Quilt Room. Sam Davis was a gift from heaven. He knows the law and the court system unlike anyone else I've ever met or seen. Sam helped me get through the federal court system with the best possible outcome. Davis and Davis, personal injury and workers' comp. We at Davis and Davis are humbled by what our clients have to say about us. If you've been injured, call me, Jim Davis, for a free consultation. We have been helping injured people for over 40 years. Call 724 437-2799. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. Bad hair day? Bad day at the office? Bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprouls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Here we go with the bottom half of the sixth inning due up for the Red Raiders. Top of the order with Christian Thomas, Hunter Chuckcheck, and Tate Musco. Joe Chambers into the sixth inning with just 61 pitches. Has faced only, I think, two more than the minimum. Strike one called. Be Make three, it three more. Yep. Three more than the minimum. Red Raiders with two hits, two singles. 0-1 pitch, just low, one and one. Mustangs defensively still the same with McLean at third, Zankovic at short, Cool at second, O'Brien at first. Curveball just misses inside. Wow, Joe thought he had that one. Outfield is Braden McKnight, Carson D'Amico, and C.J. Gesk. Behind the plate, Patrick Cavanaugh. Joe Chambers. There's a swing and a miss. Definitely 
went around on that. Red Raider fans didn't like the call, Gary. Well, I don't think there's any question about that one. He went all the way around. He, he almost spun his whole body around. The bat passed the plate. That's Here's the pitch. Ball inside, so now the count runs full. Here, watch what you say around those Red Raider fans. Gary. Well, I'm just <laughs> reporting the facts, as you say. <laughs> Remember where you're sitting at right now. Yeah. <laughs> Christian Thomas grounded to first, and I'm sorry, grounded to a pitcher and struck out. Leading off here in the sixth as the Red Raiders looking to get something going and strike three called. Wow. Fastball down the middle. Catches Thomas looking for the first out of the inning and it's going to bring up Chuck Check. And we've seen that a couple of times this year. It seems like Chambers gets stronger sometimes as the game goes on. You know, the WMBS side with Penguins hockey after our broadcast. Fastball in there for strike one. Another strong pitch there by Joe Chambers. He's got to be mid-80s, I would think, I, with that I velocity. Curveball way out in front that time is Chuck Check. Good change-up curve there by Joe Chambers. You're tuning in for the replay of the gardening show with Joey and Holly. That will come your way after Penguins hockey tonight. We'll also post the link for this week's show up on our WMBS Facebook page as well if you'd like to check it out. 0-2 pitch just inside for ball one. That's only if the Penguins don't go to triple overtime. Correct. Yeah, you never know. I mean, <laughs> this game dragging on a little bit as well, but it's been well played on both sides. 1-2 pitch, swing and a miss, four strike three. Wow. Another nice curveball by Joe Chambers just way out in front was Hunter Chuckchak, and that's going to bring up Tate Musco. Six strikeouts to go against only one walk so far this afternoon for Chambers. <laughs> Musco, Musco. Yep. 0, 0 for 2. Grounded to first and struck out. Chambers working again. Fastball just blows it by the opposing batter that time. That one might have reached upper 80s. Fastball wow. again, just bringing the heat. He's feeling it, just throwing strikes, throwing heat right now. Like you said, with the way his pitch count is, it's a good chance to get the complete game here this afternoon. Here's the 0-2. Strike three. Ooh, wow. They missed by much. Now the <laughs> was Mustang right. dugout saying, hey, what's going on here? Yep. That was a little below the knees. We'll give the umpire the benefit of the doubt that time. 1-2 pitch now. Go to the breaking pitch. Just a little low again. 2-2. Two two. Must go not chasing there. Joe with the signal. Line and deal. Strike three call. Wow, that was a right delayed the, call. <laughs> right at 10 numbers, and with 15 pitches, three strikeouts in the inning for Joe Chambers. Puts the Red Raiders down. We'll go to the top of the seventh. With the Mustangs now leading 2 to nothing here on the Sea Harper Sports Day, sponsored by Penn Residential, Central Marcom, and Amy's Quilt Room. Are you a small business owner who needs marketing help? Whether you're seeking a marketing professional to partner with on an ongoing basis or need assistance with a specific project, you'll want the expertise found at Essential Marcom. Central Marcom specializes in working with clients to build brands and establish effective messaging to reach customers. Whether you're starting up or expanding your business or need guidance on naming, logo design, website development, or how to effectively use social media, contact Dana at Essential Marcom. Dana's experience spans 18 years and includes working with local businesses as well as national and international brands on various types of marketing projects. Learn more about Essential Marcom's capabilities and view their portfolio at EssentialMarcom.com. That's E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-M-A-R-C-O-M 
Dana.com or email Dana at Dana at EssentialMarcom.com. General dentist Dr. Edward L. Wetek Jr. treats children, teens, and adults of all ages. Dr. Wetek performs all phases of general dentistry, including crowns and bridges, partials, full dentures, comprehensive orthodontics, root canals, bonded white fillings, dental implants to replace missing teeth and to stabilize loose-fitting dentures, and comprehensive exams and cleanings. Dr. Wetek's office is located on the National Pike, one mile west of the mall on Route 40. Call him up at 724-439-1616 for Dr. Edward L. Wetek, Jr. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff for residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. Mustangs looking for a little insurance as we move to the top half of the seventh inning. Laurel Islands a two to nothing lead scored the game's opening run on a solo home run from Alex McLean back in the fourth inning. Added a, another run with a bases loaded wild pitch scoring Alex McLean in the top half of the sixth inning. Looking for a little more here. Still facing Clay Dean who came on in relief of Tate Musco this afternoon. And the Mustangs with the top of the order due up here in the top of the seventh. Ty Sankovic, C.J. Gesk, and Carson D'Amico as Laurel Highland starts the fourth trip through their batting lineup. Dean's first pitch to Sankovic, a little low, but Ty went a chase and swing and a miss, counted 0-1. Dean has not relinquished a hit in his relief appearance. Mustangs go getting two runners on base via walks, and Braden O'Brien got on via an air in the sixth. Dean also hit Braden McKnight back in the fifth. And just missed on a pitch there to Sankovic to even up the count at one and one. I think Sank was looking for something on that first pitch and just knew he was going to swing regardless. Dean now a step off the mound. Both pitchers for the Red Raiders very deliberate. Which, nothing hey, wrong whole, with that. Yeah, it's their whole staff. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss now, 1-2. and two. But again, they've been effective. That's been the, the strength of this Uniontown team this year has been the pitching. Took West Mifflin to the limit. Yes. Well, that's a game that Coach Moss got to be sick over. The game here at Bailey Park. And Sankovic hits it on the ground and threw on the right side, right in between Austin Grego and Tate Musco in a right field. That's the first hit the Mustangs have picked up since Alex McLean's solo home run back in the fourth inning. Just three hits. And uh, Coach Yeoman flashing the signs again. Is, it, is the bunt on again? Let him swing. <laughs> Christian Thomas way up at third. Holding on at first over there is Tate Musco. They'll throw back and Zankovic diving back in safely. Now Coach Yeoman knows a lot more about the game than I do. I like the guy swinging away, though. That's why we're behind the fence. Well, yeah, I know. That's why I'm not coaching the team. <laughs> and I don't want to coach the team. <laughs> Dean, a little look over his shoulder. Sankovic, big lead. CJ showing bun. Here we go again. Pitch low and in the dirt. Might have been a good pitch to run on. Yeah. Blocked there by Sparks. Would have probably got down to second. Uh, Sparks would have taken a little time to regroup. Easy to say after the fact. Our buddy Gus Gerard checking in on the live stream as well. Hello, Gus. Big lead over there for Sankovic now. Dean now ready with a 1-0. Here to CJ Gesk. Showing bunt again, lays it down, goes right back to Dean, the pitcher. Make the throw over to first, covering the bag. Grego, sacrifice successful, going 1-4. Second successful sacrifice for C.J. Yep. Guest. And one out here in the top half of the seventh inning. Mustangs leading two to nothing with Carson D'Amico coming to the plate. And Carson a rare 0 for 3 today. Sure you'd like to remedy that right about now. Coming in with a 396 average, homer and 11 RBIs. Trying to pick up number 12 for the season, which is Ty Sankovic sitting over at second base. Dean glanced back at second. Pitch on the way, breaking ball. It was behind D'Amico. It didn't even move. 
That's not one you would like to see hit him. You want him up no. there hitting with the bat. Again, the issue is you have McLean, though, behind him, who has reached base safely in all three plate appearances and scored both runs for Laurel Highlands this afternoon. Next pitch to D'Amico. Fastball chopped, and Chuck Check knocks it down, but doesn't have a play over there at short. Sankovic, though, had a hold up at second as the ball hit on the left side of the infield. He couldn't advance. Well, once it was bobbled, I think he was halfway down to third. I would have taken the opportunity to get to third, but gets back to second safely, so does not record an out. Well, that's, that's a base hit for D'Amico. Yeah, it was no deep doubt. in the hole. So Carson gets his first hit of the day. Now Alex McLean, who was two for two with a walk and two runs scored. Double in the second, solo home run in the fourth, walked and scored a run in the sixth. Comes on now with two on and just one out and takes the first pitch low for ball one. Another nice play back there by Sparks that just put his body in front of that pitch in the dirt, not let it get behind him. Mustangs cannot advance. Once again, McLean set to go. 1-0 counts. Pitch on the way. Fastball called strike. McLean knew one. that one. Yep. Shaking his head. Yep, I should have hit that one. <laughs> well, it's easier said than done. Count one and one. Pitch on the way. Another fastball. A little inside. That might have got him. Nope. Close to clipping him. Takes the count to two and one. The Mustangs looking for a little more insurance going to the seventh. Never know what could happen. Dean shakes off one. Now we'll step off. Shade now covering the entire right side of the infield. And it counts two and one to Alex McLean. Top of the seventh inning. We play seven here in the high school game. Mustangs trying to Take firm hold of second place. Breaking ball called strike. And with a win here today, Laurel Highlands would finish in second place in the conference. There'd be nothing Uniontown could do about it if the Red Raiders rally back. The two teams would be tied for second place. And tomorrow's game at Laurel Highlands would determine the second place team out of the section. Once Mifflin has clinched the conference, and you have three teams fighting for the fourth and final playoff spot. Dean's next pitch here again to McLean, and that one nubbed, and Grego coming oh over, my. and he'll make the catch. And should have just got the double play over at first, but he'll get the double play at second to end the <laughs> inning. Could have went either way, but the result the same. Double play turn to end the seventh. Heads up play there from Austin Grego. Runners were going, and Grego making the throw over to Hunter Chuckcheck to go 4-6 on the double play to end the top half of the seventh inning. So Uniontown down two. Down to their final three outs, and we come back. 2-0 Laurel Highlands here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day broadcast presented by Penn Residential, Essential Marcom, and Amy's Quilt Room. With ranches in Markleysburg, Connellsville, Hopwood, Uniontown, and Periopolis, Somerset Trust Company is truly Fayette County's community bank. We invite you to stop by and experience the Somerset Trust Company difference. Local decision-making, convenient location, extended hours, award-winning online and mobile banking, and more. Somerset Trust Company, community banking worth talking about. Branches and ATMs throughout Fayette County. Does your car sound like it's saying, trade me in, trade me in, every time you start it up? Well, go to Ford of Uniontown and trade it in. That's right, your Uniontown Ford dealer is ready to assist you with a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV purchase. Board of Uniontown has all the deals, all the inventory, and they are ready to deal. It has never been a better time to buy a Ford. Service is their top priority. No matter where you purchase your Ford car or truck, Ford of Uniontown will be happy to service it for you. They offer Ford trained technicians, Ford certified parts and service, one year 12,000 mile parts warranties, and new state of the art service equipment. Call or stop in today to see the hometown service of Ford of Uniontown. Route 40 West across from Applebee's. 
So listen to your car the next time you hear it say, Trade me in! Trade me in! Ford of Uniontown, Route 40 at the top of the hill. Red Raiders will the meat of their order do up here in the bottom half of the seventh inning, but they're down in their final three outs. Colton Sparks, Clay Dean, and Eric Odom. Joe Chambers went the whole way for Laurel Highlands so far today. Gary, what's his pitch count at here as we start the seventh? I have him at 76. Okay, so a little wiggle room. 24 pitches to spare. With Colton Sparks, the Red Raiders' top hitter coming to the plate, batting 326, homer and 14 RBIs coming in. Breaking ball from Chambers, ball one. Sparks 0 for 2 today, he's due for a hit. 1-0 from Joe, fastball low, takes us to 2-0. The last hit that Uniontown mustered back in the fourth inning, single from Clay Dean, the only other hit they've picked up today. A single from Tanner Opel back in the third inning. Chambers has retired seven straight for Laurel Highlands. 2-0 pitch, swing get a miss. From Colton Sparks takes us to 2-1. Red Raiders retired in order, in fact. Chambers struck out the side in the sixth. Retired nails Greg Owen uphold in the fifth. This one sent foul from Sparks. And now the count even at 2-2. Two and two. As you said, it looks like Joe maintaining that velocity and getting stronger throughout the game. High fastball might be the place for this one, as Frank Kulitz says, and there's a curveball, just misses. Wow, how can you stay off that pitch? Well, I went with a breaking ball at 2-2. Now we're full at 3-2, and, and you'd likely expect a fastball here from Chambers. Let's see if Colton Sparks is looking dead red. 3-2 on the way, brings the heat, and Colt barely got a piece of it, fouling it off on the right side. Certainly a little late coming around there. Give him credit. Yes, Made staying contact. alive. Yep. Staying alive. Go fastball here again, Gary? Yes, absolutely. Over, make him hit your, pit, your uh, best pitch. Another 3-2. Chambers to Sparks, takes a little off it, break ball called strike three. Once again, what do I know? Yes, and that's four straight strikeouts for Chambers. In fact, he's mowed down five of his last six. One out here in the bottom of the seventh. Uniontown down to their final two outs. Three of those strikeouts looking at that curveball. Yes. Now Clay Dean at the plate. He's reached base safely in both plate appearances. Walk back in the second. Singled last time up. Takes the first pitch for strike one here from Joe Chambers. Get a reminder, stay tuned after the game for our post-game show brought to you by State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman. That will be followed by Penguins Hockey, the Gardening with Jillian Holly radio show to follow the Penguins tonight. Another breaking ball misses low, and again, we'll have the link of the Gardening show up on the WMBS Facebook page as well in case you missed it this week. 1-1. One, one. On the way, another fastball called strike. 1-2. To Clay Dean from Joe Chambers. Looking for his fifth straight strikeout is Joe. One, two pitch, another breaking ball. Did he get it? No, missed below the knees. Take us even to two and two. Another tough one to take if you're in there batting. Those, ball, those pitches are very close. Now the two and two. Chambers to Dean, another fastball swing and a miss strike three. That's five straight strikeouts from Joe Chambers. And Uniontown's down to their final out now. And Eric Odom. Just 87 pitches so far and one out remaining. Odom sacrificed back in the second, grounded out 5-3 in the fourth. Uniontown down two to nothing. Chambers first pitch to Odom, breaking ball. Called strike one, 0 and 1. To Joe, two strikes away. That'd be something, Gary, if he can strike out the side both in the sixth and the seventh. Has an opportunity to do it. 0 1 here, breaking ball a little low. Takes us even a 1 and 1. Trying to put the eyes on him, Brian? No, I'm just. I mean, Soup would be mad. Ah, he's not here, <laughs> though, today. <laughs> Count 1 and 1. On the way, another fastball, just missed, 2-1. He was down here last week with the 
game on his new mug radios. Nice. We're going to get some of those at WMBS from him. And their fastball. That one called strike two takes us to two and two. You see the little Yeti mugs he has with the little detachable speakers? Sell them like hotcakes. Yes. <laughs> He's listening to the game down here last week. Now Joe, one strike away from finishing this one off. 2-2 two, two on the way. Fastball a little high. Takes us full to 3-2. and two. If you missed any of our video broadcasts on Facebook, we also put them up on YouTube as well, both on the WMBS and South Union Township YouTube pages. Replays will be up later on tonight. 3-2 on the way. Breaking ball inside for ball four. Wow. So a little life for the Red Raiders, Gary. The game tying run coming to the plate, and Wyatt nails. And he's at 93 pitches. And even if he would hit 100 facing Wyatt, for instance, he'd still be able to finish the finish pitching to Wyatt. Nope. He'd have to come out after the batter he's facing when he would hit the 100 mark. And now Coach Yeoman's going to come out here. So nobody warming for the Mustangs, as Frank Kula noticed. And anybody coming in would have to be coming in from the field, I would think. Well, Chambers wants to finish it off. I think Yeoman's going to make a pitching change. I don't think he can change at this point. We well, talked to Joe, and the way Joe looked, he was pretty much saying, hey, he wants to go. Long discussion here in the infield. Might as well one more batter. Nails coming in with a 217 average, 0 for 2 today, 4 RBIs. Whole infield in. Umpire's going to have to come out and break this yeah. up. They can't decide what they're going to do. So Joe's going to stay in the game. And your likely option would probably be in the field anyways, though, if you're Laurel Highlands. You're going to make a move in relief. Might have to bring in um, McKnight from left field. I think Kravosky is penciled in to start regardless tomorrow. Correct. You know, Brian over at first might be an option as well. So the tying run there is There we go. The yeah, a little life for the Red Raiders here in the bottom of the seventh out of their final out. Chambers at 93 pitches from the stretch facing Wyatt Nails. First pitch, fastball inside for ball one. Somebody down there said 96, Gary. Well, I'm not official. Correct. So it would make things regardless, it's his last batter. Yeah, it would make things interesting if Nails gets on. And he swings here and grounds it to second. Cool of the flip to sank to end the game. So that will do it. Hard fought on both sides. And Laurel Highlands clinches second place in the conference with a 2 to nothing win over Uniontown this afternoon from Bailey Park. And we're back to tell you all about it right after this in our post-game show brought to you by State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network, the South Union Township Sports Network, and Facebook Live. Filing for bankruptcy is not something that anyone wants to do. Good people sometimes run into hard times and they need help. Hi, I'm Dan White with the law offices of Zebley, Mahalov & White, and I'm here to help. If you're faced with insurmountable debt and are out of options and you need help, give our office a call today. Allow us to help you understand your rights and options under the law. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road, and if you're struggling with debt, it very well could be a new beginning. So stop worrying and take action. Give our office a call today at 724-439-9200 or click on zeblaw.com for more information. Zebley, Mahalov & White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Farm fresh milk, straight off the farm. Stack and farm. 
For farm fresh dairy products, produced, processed, packaged, and sold right there, stop in Jackson Farms Dairy Store, Route 40 at Briar Hill. Check out Jackson Farms Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, and Cheddar Cheese Curds, now available, and Cheddar Cheese coming soon. Plus delicious hot deli items to eat in or take out, and the most delectable homemade ice cream you will ever eat. Best of luck to our area teams from Jackson Farms. The WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Orthopedic and Spine Institute is open, and their experienced providers are ready to care for you. Orthopedic and Spine Care spans a wide range of problems, from arthritis to joint trauma caused by injury or overuse. Hips, shoulders, knees, and backs are the most common areas where patients experience pain or impaired function. At WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, they can treat orthopedic and spine problems with state-of-the-art care. Their board-certified orthopedic surgeons and specialists are well-experienced in the latest treatments for damaged and diseased joints. They offer everything from physical therapies to joint repairs and joint replacements. Whenever possible, the newest, minimally invasive techniques are used to ensure quicker recovery, less pain, and less damage to surrounding tissues. To learn more about the newly opened Orthopedic and Spine Institute at WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital or to schedule an appointment, call 724-912-7533 or visit wvumedicine.org slash uniontown. WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, the new us, here for you. Back wrapping things up from Bailey Park on our post-game show brought to you by State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman. Laura Highlands, a 2 to nothing win this afternoon over the Uniontown Red Raiders. And Gary, some clarity now as far as the section standings are concerned. They'll have a final on the West Mifflin Ringgold game, but nonetheless, West Mifflin has clinched the conference. They sit at 9-1. and one. Laurel Highlands has clinched second place. Mustangs sitting at 8-3. and three. Uniontown in third place right now at 6-5. and five. And Elizabeth Forward clinched a playoff spot as well with a 6-4 to four come from behind win over Bell Vernon. That eliminates the Leopards. Greensburg-Salem was already out. And the only way Ringgold gets in is if they would sweep West Mifflin and then get a Bell Vernon win over Elizabeth Forward tomorrow to tie the Warriors for fourth place in the conference. That's the only way the Rams would go to the postseason. So you have at least four in, and Ringgold needing a sweep over West Mifflin to become number five, and also some help from Bell Vernon tomorrow, and that likely won't happen. Well, a lot of combinations there, and you're right. Uh, needs a lot of things to happen for Ringgold to have any chance to get into the playoffs. But uh, the game here today, very entertaining game, but uh, not much action as far as hitting. But the Mustangs unable to take advantage of several opportunities with runners on base and uh, less than one out, unable to push men across. The Mustangs left nine men on base. And they did come across with two runs led by Alex McLean, who was two for three, the sole RBI by McLean on that home run in the fourth inning, the towering shot over the left center field fence out there near Clus Lumber. Yes. And uh, that put the Mustangs up one to nothing, and they did score again in the sixth inning without the benefit of the hit, a couple, a couple walks and an error by Uniontown allowed the Mustangs to push across that second run. So the Mustangs finished with two runs on four hits. They did not commit an error, and as I said, they left nine men on base. The story for the Mustangs, though, Joe Chambers going the distance. I had him at 97 pitches, had nine strikeouts, and uh, only allowed two hits for the Red Raiders. So on the Red Raiders' side, no runs, two hits. They committed two errors, and they left four men on base. And give a lot of credit to the Red Raider pitchers also, Tate Musco and Clay Dean, who uh, very much limited the Mustang bats here this afternoon. Yeah, well-played game on both sides. In our post-game show brought to you by State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman. Our broadcast also on the South Union Township Sports Network. Brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiff, Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. Breeze Line Cable, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CU TV, including Gary Smith and his staff. And Gary Frankhauser, this was a lot of fun here this afternoon, and we'll do it again tomorrow over at Laurel Highlands High School. Yeah, and you'll probably see, uh, as we said, Kravoski for the Mustangs, and you got to believe the Red Raiders will come back with Christian Thomas. Yeah, I would think so, and that should be a fun matchup as well. The lefty Kravoski, the righty ace for Uniontown, Christian Thomas. Should be a lot of fun, but here this afternoon, the Laurel Highlands Mustangs blank the Uniontown Red Raiders by a score of 2 to nothing, And that'll wrap things up from Bailey Park for my broadcast partner, Gary Frankhauser, Frank Cool for helping us out with our score hub. Jerry Dupay behind the camera, and Nick Barczyk back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. This is Brian Morozak, and have yourselves a pleasant good evening. Go Pens tonight, Laurel Let's Highlands. Let's go Pens. It. Laurel Highlands wins it 2 to nothing over Uniontown. Song, everybody, from Bailey Park. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with